recording. Welcome, everybody, to All the Things with Lane and Laney. This is going to be a special uh, eve of the Super Bowl podcast, a meeting of the minds summit, so to speak. This has been a long time in the making. My uh, brother and his friend Austin are with me today, and uh, we've put Laney into the couch cushion because this is all guys. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, she will have a, a podcast with just the ladies coming up here shortly. We're working on that. But for today, uh, we're going to get rolling with some guys and just guy thoughts, guy things. And we're going to have fun with it, I think. Indeed. <laughs> so um, before we get started, I want to uh, first thank our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Hude. 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 Who do you think will beat them Bengals? Nobody. The Rams. Maybe the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss my ass. <laughs> so, yeah, we are down here today in the heart of Cincinnati. And uh, we are down in my brother's basement surrounded by a ton, shit ton of Bengals memorabilia, a jersey for every year. Yep. And uh, couldn't imagine a, a better setting for a pre-Super Bowl. <laughs> podcast so uh before we get talking let me introduce right. our second sponsor uh this podcast is also brought to you by russell's medicated potato chips fitting for the super bowl uh, everyone's going to be mowing down potato chips and dips uh feeling bloated can't have a movement the low factory won't move product just one bag of russell's medicated potato chips will get those workers back to work and you won't have that you won't have that uncomfortable feeling anymore absolutely artificially flavored chips flavored from different uh for different tastes and effects try one of these dr kevorkian corn chips <laughs> carolina reaper barbecue prisoner release pringles hurricane katrina spice carnival funyuns and baptist revival ranchero soul cleanser and of course the bang bang poop shoot asian market our patented flavors and additives will make your toilet sound like a tugboat and your bowels sound like a Bengal tiger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, that is Russell's medicated corn chips or medicated uh, chips for your Super Bowl parties. I don't, I don't think we have those for tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Got to go. <laughs> yeah, gotta go and get some. I'm, I'm fine. My workers are working. <laughs> Your little Oompa Loompas are down there moving the loaves around. That's right. So, gents, I thank you. I know this was uh, this has been planned for, what, four weeks now? Yes. Cheers. Wow. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Yeah, for glad to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I welcome the, welcome the conversation. What's everybody drinking on today? I've got Kraken rum in my glass and uh, Truth Imperial IPA. I start. I started out with a Venezuelan rum and switched over to Crown Royal Black. Nice. And I'm drinking what you got me for Christmas. I can't even think of what the hell it is right now. <laughs> but it's a uh, it's a honey flavored bourbon, and I've got kind of a mix going here between uh, Walcott uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey that my buddy got me for for my birthday. So right. very nice. <laughs> yeah. So who are you guys pulling for tomorrow? <laughs> I mean, sitting in the Bengals dungeon, I don't have a choice, but yeah. I have to say Bengals. They're, they're, yeah. they're. Fair to fair assumption. Some people might get hurt if they answer the wrong <laughs> the wrong answer. <laughs> cousin Tate's not here, so let's say we do have a cousin that's a diehard Rams fan, and also a friend down in Georgia who's yeah. hell bent on would have loved to gone to the Super Bowl. Yeah, um, and you were fortunate enough to win a raffle or how did I, I, that work the each team is allotted a certain number of tickets and the way they determine who gets to purchase those tickets they have a, a lottery for their season ticket holders and being a season ticket holder i've won the first lottery and purchased two super bowl tickets but um i decided to sell mine to other Bengals fans so i won't be attending the super bowl but i will get a souvenir you know they're gonna bring you back something yep oh sweet yeah got a Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. No, as as a holder of a Super Bowl ticket, everything's mobile now. You have to do it on an app. But if you have a ticket, you're able to get a souvenir ticket, a paper one, a real one, whatever. 
And I said, you know, I really love a Super Bowl. I really love a Super Bowl souvenir. And they're like, what do you want? And I was like, you can get a free ticket. I'll take one of those. Just give me one of my tickets back as a souvenir. And they're like, oh, we can do that. No problem. So I should have a Super Bowl ticket in my hand next week. Well, let's say you've got the stogie. That's that's <laughs> half half the step there. Yep. And you're attending a huge, huge ass Super Bowl party tomorrow. Uh, my regular guys who tailgate, um, we're throwing a tailgate. In his driveway. So we'll have the bus there, the tents, the heaters, the the grill and everything. So we'll be all set right out in the driveway. Austin, you're attending. I am. Staying the whole day. Yep. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be a schlaver knocker. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. I might have to stop and get more beer on the way. I got, I got you a 12-pack. It starts at 2. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and the game doesn't start till four hours yes, later. Yes. It's 6.30. <laughs> We do have an ice luge. There'll be, you know, we can supplement that with alcohol. With like, oh, is that COVID approved? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Mike Dewine approved <laughs> ice luge. I'll yeah, just dude. cut a hole in my mask and it'll be fine. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Still wearing the mask. <laughs> See, mine usually has a mask or a hole in it anyway. I, I walk around with a hole. I can breathe a lot better out yeah, of that. Absolutely. Mask. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so describe the ice luge, ice ice luge for me. Ice luge. Well, ice you've used it a couple of times. I, I know, but everyone still talks about the Denver game where we got free beer inside the stadium. You remember that? No. There was a dude who apparently <laughs> inside the stadium. Inside the stadium, we we got pretty happy outside of the tailgate, and when yeah. we're sitting in the game, it was a night game if I remember right. Uh, some guy uh, walking through the concourse stole a case or a twelve pack <laughs> of Bud Light. Uh, from one of the vendors and just walked down there. All he wanted was two beers. He grabbed two beers and left the rest of the case sitting in the steps right oh, next really? to our aisle. And we just started passing them out. <laughs> we oh. And I don't drink beer, but I was like, dude, this is really kind of cool. So we passed it down and we each both, we got a picture of it. I can show you. I was there? Yes. Jesus age. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been. We're all like, yeah, here's our beer. <laughs> oh, I must have been on that ice luge uh, too many times then. I don't remember that. Yeah. But the ice luge, it's a block of ice that can be decorated, carved, whatever you want to call it, um, with a channel cut in it that you pour liquor into at the top. And as it runs through the ice, the liquor gets chilled. And when it hits your mouth, it's nice and cold. And there's a little water mixed in with it. But, I mean, it's just a perfect way to do a shot of alcohol as it comes out it's nice and frozen or frozen so but cold cool. it's and it's a cool way to do it it looks yeah. kind of funny while you're doing it because you got your lips wrapped around a you know a block of ice kind right. of but the one the one i had for my wedding was huge yeah and we had a uh, 50th anniversary ice luge that was i want to say like three or four feet tall was it really? Yeah, and it crossed in the middle so two people do one shot at once it was Just say it literally if you see the pictures of it, it looks like Two people on one one person on one side, one person on the other, and it looked like they're literally trying to kiss the ass of a goat. Yeah, <laughs> and they're pouring water down, and you're just <laughs> yeah sucking it's, it. You feel like you're pleasuring the abominable snowman. It's just <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah. It's really just this. It's a very awkward. It is stance, awkward. But yes, it's fun. <laughs> Say ass out, it's mouth sp- open. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> In nature, they call that presenting. Right. <laughs> I don't remember that on any of the Marty Stolfer videos I watched. <laughs> this is the act of presenting. Right. <laughs> oh, wild, wild Kingdom was that? Or Wild America, something like that. Wild, yes, Wild America. Yeah, wild Marty America. Stolfer. Okay. All right. Jack Hanna was Wild Kingdom. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Remember those videos. So what, I mean, I don't follow NFL football. What are the odds? The Bengals will win tomorrow. Aren't they favored? No, they're not. They are uh-huh. four to four and a half point underdogs. It may have moved a little oh, bit. Okay, but yeah, I thought the points were in their favor. I heard no. that, but I didn't. No, we've been underdogs all the way through the playoffs, except maybe against the Raiders. I think we might have been favored because we're the we were the home team in that one. But technically, this is a the Bengals are the home team, but it's in Los Angeles, so the betters are the odds makers are giving the Rams home field advantage. So that's an automatic three points usually. Right. And they see the Bengals as the lesser team, and so we're four to four and a half point underdogs in this one. Mm. But we were underdogs against KC. We were underdogs against Tennessee, and look how that turned out. I'm saying, I hope, I hope you win. I feel like you've put in the time, you've put in the effort. <laughs> My wife always, I mean, Lainey always says, you know, when I'm watching the Buckeyes play, it's oh, who's we? 
are you out there? What's, what's your number? You know, it's like, shut your mouth. We are, we are, we are in a fight today. Right. <laughs> I don't consider myself part of the team, but you're right. I put in the time I go, I get a lot of pleasure out of watching the going to the games with my friends. And, you know, I, I want good things to happen when I'm there. Oh yeah. And to see this team do what they did at least a year ahead of schedule is incredible. I'm just, I'm still more in shock than anything else, but this, if they win it all, it's like, what the hell? But it would be so awesome. I feel like the last two games have been like a, what the hell? Right. Like, holy shit. They did that. Oh <laughs> right. my God. But as it goes, yeah. Austin, you got a team? Oh, I'm a bears <laughs> fan. So I'm basically no, <laughs> I've, I've honestly put in more time with the team than half the team has. So oh, yeah, yeah, that's, and at this point, you know, management has put less time in than I have. Seems so like it. Yeah. I've written some strongly worded letters. That's <laughs> Is it? You think it's helped? Not at all. <laughs> well, it's got it off your mind anyway. It, yes. I vented. We're good. <laughs> it's, you know, I'm one step away from a heart attack. One pork chop away from a heart attack, I guess. Okay. Is the, what's the Bill McCluskey? I was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's I'm Chicago. Yoking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yoking. I'm yeah. yoking. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's gonna be me one day. Maybe you just need to get fatter. <laughs> Life goals. Life, Life goals. goals. Well, everybody's gotta have their goals, I suppose. So you guys have uh, known each other quite a long time, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about your book. I mean, that's what we do on this podcast. We've had numerous right. authors on the show. Uh, we've had them talk about their book. So I I couldn't. I know. Did you guys write under pen names? Didn't you? Yes. All right, but you know who cares at this point? You know, you're just trying to right. get the book out there. So, what was the name of the book, and what was it about? Uh, I've got a copy in the house here somewhere, I'm sure. But it's called "The Boss's Daughter." Yeah. Um, so it was. I don't know how to describe. I mean, an erotic novel, I suppose. Pretty much. Um, it's it's a mafia story. Okay. Um, that's. Really, it's kind of driven by strong female protagonists that, uh, you know, you don't really want. I mean, I guess I can kind of give stuff away at this point, but just like, go right ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, basi- it's basically, you know, like the women are, you know, empowering themselves when, with sex in order to covertly get these positions of power in the mafia. Oh, OK. Um, it was I wrote the story. He wrote all the sex scenes because he's much better at that than I am. Um, I'd be saying things like "booby" and "cooter," <laughs> and yeah. So it would be, it would have been a disaster if I would have wrote any of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I kind of gave an outline for the story, and he ran with it. Is is basically what happened. Yeah. So. It, it came from the success of Fifty Shades. Yeah. Stuff, and I, I read. I want to say. 20 pages of one of those books and it was it was after i started writing ours but i heard from many people that it wasn't written that well it wasn't you know a brilliant novel it was just you know people were turned on by it like, okay that's that's great but you know if i can do better why not try and so but i'm i'm, I'm shit at story so I turned to Austin. I was like, Austin, I need, you know, I have got an idea to, to write something like this, but I need help putting it all together. I can, I can do the tactics. I can write the chapters. I can write the, the action, but I don't know how it all goes together. And Austin's like a master at the, you know, the twists and turns of a story. And so, yeah, he came up with the story. I came up with the nuts and bolts and, you know, it's like the way we did it, the way we did it together. It was, I don't think we, I don't think I would have done anything close to to finishing a book if I didn't have you to bounce it off of. Oh, well, but that's the other thing is I'm not great at, it wasn't just the sex stuff that he wrote. No. It was, you know, I'm like, uh, all content. right, you know, gal gets out of a car and it's, you know, raining and he's talking about, you know, the puddles and the drops and, you know, and, and the ambiance and, and how the air feels. And yeah, I'm just setting, like, setting the scene. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, dude, she went inside, <laughs> you know, like she walks in, 
and was, he puts together the feel of it, and that's yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was it was honestly I I can't imagine if I ever wrote something again, and that's we've we've kind of talked about doing something. Yeah. But the only thing I could write would be like a screenplay, where mm. <laughs> these are the words, you know, this is the dialogue, <laughs> and this is kind of the setting. Um. Because I don't, I don't have his ability to paint a picture that somebody can read and visualize exactly what's what's taking place. Okay. So, let's say I was talking to him last night about a book I'm writing with a friend of mine, and I told him that I don't know right now. It's just a bunch of collected facts, and like I don't know where the chapter should start. I don't know where the chapter should end. I kind of know where the chapter should end. It's like a there, there. You finish the thought. Now let's move on to a different thought, but yet I don't know how to put everything in succession. Yeah, because it's you know the book that we're writing together. It's kind of like a a memoir or a, a, an autobiography, so to speak. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting because I was talking to Ryan last night about you know do I do I get in contact with somebody on Fiverr <laughs> and have them have them edit it and say okay. This is all jacked up, dude. You need to figure out a different plan for this book. I'm like, the story is there. The content's there, but it just needs to be presented in a different way. And I was going to use him for editing and then you for, like, you know, bridging along a story chain. Absolutely. I'd be happy yeah. to. So that'd be so much fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm looking forward to finally finishing that, but it's a long way off. But, you know, outside of yeah. looking on the Internet for that, I've wanted to outsource it to people I know. Absolutely. You know. Trust the people that, yeah. Give them a shot anyway, and if yeah. we come back with shit, then <laughs> go to Fiverr. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because those people are just you guys on the other end of the chain of Fiverr. That's it, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to charge you anything. <laughs> yeah, we thought about it. So we'll we'll see about it. But um, you turned me on to a movie called Don't Look Up. <laughs> we, we've discussed this. Both of you guys have seen it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I I saw it and immediately texted him and was like, "You need to watch this because I need I need your stance on this. Yeah, I need your opinion." Phenomenal freaking movie because it totally embodies the way the world and the idiots of this world operate today. I thought so. You know, there can be a if nobody knows or whoever's listening doesn't know the premise of the movie. There's an asteroid that is going to strike Earth. And essentially, people are just like, oh, that's not in my social media feeds. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to duck face about it. I got other things to worry about. I got other shit to do. The media doesn't take it seriously because right. it's not a happy story. Right. Yep. It's not a happy story. I yeah. mean, they've got they've got all the proper players in the movie. It's fantastic. I think it, Strahan is in it, right? Wasn't he the one that? No, it was Tyler Perry was Tyler the Perry. other host of essentially the Essentially Strahan yeah. for ABC <laughs> right. in the morning. Right. You know, we're just here to present happy news. Oh, there's a cat on a bicycle. Oh, that's all I had a computer generated, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then there's Leonardo DiCaprio that comes along and says, you fucking twits. There's an asteroid coming. What are we going to do about it? But no, the whole premise of the movie I wanted to discuss with you guys because you, I think you turned me on to it, right? You were the yeah. one that told me about it. Yeah. Just what is wrong with people? <laughs> what have we become in society to where... This movie has actually hit spot on. We've become slaves to social media. Pretty much. Social media and our, and our cell phones. and like It's all we, of it, yeah. Like we talked before this podcast, we were just talking about this, about people who put their lives up on social media as the gospel. Like, oh, this is the way I live. Look at this happy picture I've got of myself. This is everyday people. This is me. So let's say this movie takes place in 1975. Yeah. There's actual news in 1975. <laughs> yeah. There's not news today because news is an extension of social media. Right. It, there's an entertainment factor to all of news for the most part. I mean, there, I'm sure there are some, some uh, reliable sources. Yeah. But for the most part, it's, we are catering to our demographic. So it's an extension of social media. Nice. This movie taking place today, it, it just shows that. I mean, we are stupid. We follow <laughs> only what we follow. 
and it's a push of a button follow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's we're not following leadership, we're not following ideals or anything. It's I'm following this person because I liked what this person did once. And now I just regurgitate everything they have. And and to that point, the, the leadership isn't even leading, according to that oh, movie. Oh, no, it's not. It's the, not It all. was all about the politics. Like, uh, we're not going to talk about this because that would really hurt our election chances, you know, in six mm-hmm. months. Mm-hmm. So we can't bring this out here now. That's that's going to hurt my numbers. It's going to make us look foolish. Yeah. And so the government didn't do shit about this. You know, they took it. They didn't take it as a real warning. They're like, okay, we'll, we'll have our people look into They, you know, kicked it down the road a little bit. But, you know, it, it can't be dealt with now because it will hurt our election chances coming up. And I think that's every single politician that's out there. Agreed. So, I mean, you're right. It, the movie hit the nail on the head so squarely that it's, it's fucking scary. It is fucking scary, (laughs) but it's, yeah. I mean, the other thing that I took away from the movie is that there are like no likable characters. (laughs) You hate across the board. Like almost every single person I mean, everybody's flawed in, in the actual world. Everybody's flawed. Yeah. But every person in this movie is just so significantly flawed <laughs> in some way, shape or form. Um, like DiCaprio's character cares, but I mean, he's, he's also all about himself, all about yeah, himself. He yeah. got wrapped up into it. Yeah. yeah. And even uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. Her character incredibly frustrated but also you are an intelligent person and all you want to do is scream at people right how does that solve problems <laughs> you know i mean just yeah. vernacular matters yeah you know like use your words matter so if you're going to try to sp- i'll equate it to like covid you can care about covid you you can think that it's the worst thing in the world you know whatever but if you're screaming at people yeah. they're gonna shut down absolutely yeah you know telling everybody that there are ways to send messages and i think that's one thing i took away from this movie is that screaming doesn't help and dismissing doesn't help obviously but it's you know i don't know so you were telling me that it was originally written about global warming climate change yeah was, was the premise that of it. was the original intent yeah yeah and it's the same message like okay i think we can all maybe agree that they like there's some shit going on with the climate right but the louder you scream over here and the more you dismiss it over here it just divides us further yeah we're not getting anywhere <laughs> right and, and that goes with every single issue that exactly yeah, that comes yes. across the board Yes. Right. It's like, I hate racism. Okay. Well, if you're going to scream at it, then I'm not going to listen to you. I, right? I don't think there's a lot of people in the world who are like, yay, racism. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but the louder you scream makes it inherently makes you sound more unreasonable. Yeah. And when you're unreasonable, people are less likely to listen. <laughs> right. Politics and religion. I mean, you go into, you go into <laughs> politics, you start talking about politics. It's like, uh, I believe in this. I believe that Joe Schmo is going to bring us to to great pastures, and we're going to do greater things. Well, I don't believe that way. Sway me. And they try to sway him. It's like nope. And I mean, they just draw this freaking brick wall, this hard line. You're not going to change my mind. And it's like you're you're not listening to reason. You're not listening to facts. You're not listening to statistics. You're not listening to any other viewpoint other than your own. Right. And it's so frustrating. And that's what the basis of this movie is, is that people are just so dead set and they're what they find to prioritize is what's important to them. I think Ariana Grande was in there and she was the, she was the uh, pop singer that was just like, Oh, whatever, you know, that type. And you need to speak about this. You need to get the message out there. And it's like, that's not going to affect me in a positive way or you're an (laughs) idiot, you know? So, well, and I mean, but that's the thing is at some point they do like she does get on board with that, doesn't she? In the movie? It's been I, a, it's been a bit. But it was it was to her also, benefit. But that's the thing is because then it's become popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when something becomes trendy, now we care. Yeah. And, and that's not caring. That's 
just jumping on a bandwagon. Yeah, it's a group thing. It's... You know, I mean, that's why I'm not going to sing the bangle song with you guys because <laughs> you didn't. I, you must have been hitting behind the microphone. I didn't see your lips moving. I he don't didn't. know it. I thought you were yelling. <laughs> I only know the first two parts. He finished. Okay, off yeah, the last I was going to say. I, I know. I know who day. Like you know, <laughs> I knew the first two. Yeah. yeah, but I'm. I will support my friends and in, in their endeavors, but you're still just a bitter bear fan <laughs> I, I'm, yeah i'm i'm dead inside, <laughs> you're dead inside. <laughs> we, we gave you andy dalton what's your problem but, <laughs> but here's the thing how would you feel if all of a sudden like i show up tomorrow and i've got a jennings Bengals jersey <laughs> and i'm like oh dude yeah we're finally doing this aren't we guys you'd be it, like i i wouldn't care about the jennings jersey it would be like we're doing this like no you're not there we go that's what i'm we. saying is yeah. that's that's not caring that's right. jumping on a bandwagon yeah who's jennings that's my, uh, my last name. No, <laughs> are we not supposed to do last names? <laughs> You're fucked. You're yeah, so fucked. Shit. <laughs> you can blur me out, right? <laughs> just, it's too late. It's a different. Too late. It, it's there's too a lot. There's a lot of us around. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't know who Jennings was. I thought he was an ex, ex quarterback. Or no, something no. That got traded. <laughs> no. I'm Austin Jennings from Irvine, California. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> A lot of people from California, you can find him out there. That's right. <laughs> <sighs> so talking about social media and things like that and being presented facts versus feelings. I want to get your guys' take on the media and or editorials versus presenting editorials on a daily basis versus facts like presenting the facts in the news okay there was an earthquake that happened and versus someone saying i feel that this earthquake was wrong <laughs> and it should have never happened and white people are to blame for it or <laughs> asian people that caused the coronavirus are to blame for it oh, you know facts versus feelings does that exist anymore which <laughs> do do facts exist? Right. The truth is gone. Good question. I'll say they, they exist. They're out there and they get put up as a billboard. And then someone just walks up and goes, no, and just throws that away. But so this would be, this is very unpopular opinion, I'm sure. But I have no problem with the whole me too movement and speak your truth. You know what? Like something bad happens, man. Go like tell people that something shitty happened to you. Yeah. I don't like where it's gone because speak your truth. Isn't everybody's that's not everybody's truth. Yeah. Your yeah. truth and my truth, two different things. And this is something that, that Ryan and I have talked about is you have a guy who's colorblind and you say, Hey, what color is this shirt? You know, I'd, I'd look at your shirt and say, you're wearing a red shirt. He could be colorblind and say, you're wearing a green shirt. Yeah. It's true to him. Right. He's yeah. speaking his truth. Right. The truth is you're wearing a red shirt. Yeah. Without the conversation that takes place in between that, and that's where he can be adamant that no, it's 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 fucking green. Right. It's fucking green. I'm never going to listen to anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. That's what editorialism gets us. Mm. Is that it is our take, it is somebody's take on an event which unless I, I don't think people realize that media is editorialized now to such an extent. It used to be X happens. Yeah. Who, what, where, when why the facts, how? why and how Yeah. we need to take out the why, because honestly, we don't know. I don't know why somebody said something, you know, just who, what, where, when give me the facts right there. That's it. Yeah. The why doesn't matter. It's not for me to decide as a reporter, media person, it's not for you. It's not for anybody. Take it the out. Yeah. But, yeah, a volcano erupted. 6,000 people died. There we go. End of story. Right. End of coverage. That's but the end. The way that people talk about it on the news is they try to get ratings out of it, and they try to add their own little touch of flair to it to try to make it sensationalized and... I mean, that just goes with everything. Well, it, it's it's touching into that those feelings. Okay, 6,000 people died. Well, <clears throat> those are the facts. 
but to get more viewership to get people to be hooked into the story you've got to start telling who those six thousand people were what are the children that got killed in this where are the you know the the wives mothers and you know the the poor people that you know are part of those people and that's what you know tugs at the heartstrings and that's i don't, I don't want to say that it's cheap and easy but it it, it kind of is so is that kind of an indictment of our society that just the fact that six thousand people died isn't enough to make us feel bad right that we have to have a story behind yeah, absolutely that. Yeah. absolutely not i mean look at the the twin towers yeah i mean hellacious event but you know oh my god we got everybody's attention how do we keep this going well we start talking about this guy that was on the airplane that made his cell phone call or made this call to his wife and, you know, just try to bring more, more people to our channel because we're talking about all these things that I don't want to say they don't matter. I don't want to sound insensitive, No, but you're the news. You're not, uh, somebody that's just sensationalizing everything just to get more viewership more ratings and things like that we look to the news for facts we look to the news to give us information that we can go on we can build our own opinions on and not be swayed so that's what i'm asking you guys what do you feel about you know facts being presented to us versus just everyone just throwing out their opinion whether it be newspaper whether it be uh tv everything well, I, I I worked at a, a job I had, I want to say, seven or eight years ago, and there was a girl who was trained as a journalist. And we had a discussion on a business trip up to Chicago one time, and we were talking about her journalism degree. And I said, it is so, even back, <clears throat> excuse me, even back then, it was so difficult to find a piece, any kind of media piece that was unbiased. And she's like, what are you talking about? That's all journalists do. And I was like, show me one. And I said, there was a man who committed a crime. And, you know, to go basic, I mean, you could just say there was a person who committed this crime. You know, just give me the facts. It doesn't have to be a man. It doesn't have to be a color of a man. It doesn't have to be ethnicity of a man. Okay, you can put a man as a descriptor as to, you know, it wasn't, you know, some little girl committing the act. But just say that there was a person who committed this crime on this date and time and this happened not oh there was a black man who shot a white person like why are you putting those kinds of you know automatically biased terms in this day and age even i mean they shouldn't be biased terms but the way the media portrays them all the time they are biased they carry a bias with them because the media trains us to think that way Stop doing that, right. and the bias goes away. But they can't stop doing it. And do you think that's government, CIA <laughs> pushed? <laughs> Should I'm we, being can we call Tito? <laughs> we need to call Tito. <laughs> call Tito. <laughs> I'm being serious. I feel like the CIA is pulling the, the strings on the the media. Is that Operation Mockingbird? Is that I mean, what that, it was? that goes back to Operation right. Mockingbird. Right. That goes back to the the idea that you know control the media, control the minds, basically. Right. Control the masses. I'm not that heavily conspiratorial, but it's not something I would just immediately pass off. I mean, looking back at all the uh, proven CIA documents and government documents, all the despicable things that our government has done and can do at least those pe- those documents that have been released right those are just like a handful of them right yeah and i'm not pointing just specifically to mockingbird but to you know a bunch of others where there were plans in place to uh set off explosives in florida to make it look like the cubans did it so that it would be justified if we wanted to invade cuba those plans were in place right and you know the experiments that the government has done on its soldiers and on citizens uh the um what was it they gave syphilis to a bunch of people in st louis or something like that um i've never been to st louis just for the record <laughs> austin you were part of, you were part of that study weren't you <laughs> no i saw somewhere back in the 60s they intentionally gave uh some sort of std uh, i know what you're talking about yeah i, I don't remember the details right but yeah but i mean it's it, it it's documented. These, the government has done this stuff. And to think that the government Stopped. won't 
continue doing this stuff is absurd to just dismiss because it's labeled a conspiracy theory. And that's the worst expression in America next to racism. Right. Is conspiracy theory because it just shuts down the yeah. narrative. Of, they they gave it a connotation and now that's the only connotation it has. Conspiracy theory is bad. You're an idiot. Yep. Like, n- no. It really sometimes mean that you're a rational thinker and that you're not going to dismiss something just because it has one kind of label. And I mean, we can go into all kinds of, you know, operations that CIA and other government agencies have done and have been proven to do and to just dismiss them offhand because someone labeled a conspiracy theory is just absurd. And it's to just automatically dismiss it based on its label and that someone labeled it. But isn't that labels are a huge issue in this country? Oh, absolutely. Oh, they're almost a fucking necessity. Yeah, <laughs> you got to right. you got to label something. I mean, you right, gotta, you got to put a we label, label ourselves. On. Yeah, but that's the thing is you have so many people who go out and say, "I'm a Democrat" or "I'm a Republican." So what are you? What are you? What do you, what do you say you are? I'm honestly a <laughs> a person that feels moderately about these issues, and you can't be that. You got to you got to pick a side. Right, right, but that's. Right. When I say that, then people stop listening because they're like, oh, okay, here's one of these idiots. Yeah, he's one yeah, of those. You're, you might as well be a conspiracy yeah, guy. But it's also they can't <laughs> listen. We don't have conversations anymore. Nope. It's I identify as this. I label myself as this, however it works. And it's that's a huge issue. Like like you were saying earlier, the the, the article, you know, a black man kills a white man. A man killed a man. Yeah, it's it's bad. You know, a, a white man kills a black man. It's bad. Like, don't kill. Right. <laughs> you know, the color of the person's skin, unless that is later found to be a motivating factor. Yeah. yeah. Is irrelevant. Yeah. The key word in that sentence should be kill, not black or white. Yeah. The key word is kill. Loss of yeah. life yeah. should right. be the biggest right. point of news. Right. But. Yeah, I mean that, but again, it's editor- editorializing. But we do that to ourselves. So how do how do we stop that? Is it we turn off? I'm gonna fucking say it. <laughs> CNN. Do we turn off CNN because they're that's, a bunch of fucking ass clowns that don't report? That's already happening. You seen the viewership numbers of CNN? <laughs> I know, but they don't stop for some reason. The goddamn station hasn't shut off yet. <laughs> But some people might think the same thing about Fox, so I'll sure. throw that out there. I mean, I feel like they've made a a, a, a shift, we'll say that, <laughs> uh, towards, you know, a certain type of viewpoint or whatever. But, you know, do we shut off those stations? Do we just not turn them on? I don't know the whole mechanism for how they get numbers for, oh, my God, how many people are watching this right now? <laughs> the shit that we're reporting, how many people, we got to keep it up, yeah. Yeah, keep that fire going. Yeah, keep talking about shots fired and people dead and black and white and Asian and, you know, what what constitutes us shutting that down? How do how do we go along? How do we go about shutting down that narrative to stop watching, stop buying the newspaper? What is it? I don't think it happens at this point. (laughs) I I, I, I think we're beyond the point of. You think it's an automated running machine that's just doing what it's doing and it'll get funded no matter what, whether there's viewership or not? I don't think people are capable of turning off something that agrees with what they believe. Yeah, I believe that. I'm a Fox News watcher. That's all I watch. That's yeah. all. I'm, I'm not saying that. That's not me. No, but no, I'm no. But I'm just else. saying. But that's but that's the mindset. And and how many how many people do we know? Like, my folks will not watch Fox News. Mm-hmm. I have dear friends who will only watch <laughs> Fox News. Yeah. And I think that's, and I t- I've told them both. It's kind of the issue, you know, when you're only getting when you're getting your information from one source you can't trust everything they say yeah you know i mean that's just that's factually of it but my folks and my friends respectively 
get all of the justification, all the affirmation that they need in their beliefs from those shows. Oh, from feel, those networks they feel so much better about themselves they do don't they? my god they feel don't so they? good <laughs> and the funny thing is is that my folks and my friends can be in the same room and have a great time unless you bring up a certain topic. unless you bring up certain topics <laughs> yeah. and then it's and then it's less fun yeah right <laughs> but it's but but that's the problem is it's routine it's you know i wake up i'm going to see these things that my yes, I was talking to the guy at work yesterday, and and now they're talking about this on there, and and they're agreeing with what I'm saying. Right, but that's the problem. The news shouldn't agree with your standpoint. <laughs> like it should not agree with your standpoint, no. and you shouldn't go out. I don't know. It's regurgitating, regurgitating news facts is just it's boring. Well, no, I True. used I used to work with different. As a personal trainer, I used to work with different people. One guy was in his house. Another one was at the, the fitness center that I worked in. And the guy at his house only watched Fox News. Or sometimes he would watch MSNBC. As he would quote unquote say, you know, I just want to see what the libtards are saying. Yes. His, his words. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, why do you put yourself through this? I never understood why people watch the news and then, like you said, they sway towards, well, CNN isn't what, saying what I believe in, so I'm going to jump over to the Southern News Channel where they, oh, oh, yeah, you're saying what I believe in. I'm going to sit in here and watch you and be gleeful. But this guy would get so amped up at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> watching shit that doesn't pertain to him and that he can't change. It's like, why would you even do that? Why would you get politically involved? And it goes across every single uh, topic in humanity. Like, as far as religion, you can't change people's minds on religion. You can't change people's minds, sway them on abortion. You can't change it on if they got a belief about uh, you know, bigotry or racism or things like that. You can't, it's so hard to sway their opinion on it. So why would you stick to a news channel that just, you just get to comfortably sit back and just go, oh, yeah, those people are right along with my line of vision. And, and, yeah, it just fires me up. The biggest thing that I couldn't stand when I was training people, and this guy specifically, was that he would watch that show. He would watch the opposite of what he believed in, a.k.a. he was watching Fox News because he'd go, yeah, 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 and pump his fist. And then he would go and switch back over to MSNBC where the morning show was on and goes, these people, I mean, I'm blah, 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 and just start ranting and raving about it. I'm like, what is the point? <laughs> yeah. Why, why are we feeding into it? Why are we giving our attention to it? The more we give energy to the negative shit that goes against what we think, the more it just perpetuates. And why would you do that? Why do you need to raise your blood pressure over shit you can't change? <laughs> It always perplexed me because, like I said, I did it at one house, and then I'd go to the fitness center, and there'd be people watching X, Y, and Z on the news channels, and you'd, they'd come over to the desk where I was sitting just innocently, and they would just download their shit, their political <laughs> shit on me. And it's like, dude, I don't give a fuck about what's going on because I can't change it. I could write my congressman seven letters a day, but you think he's going to change his mind? No, he's balls deep in Washington. He didn't give a shit about me. Right. So it just always perplexed me as to people that are just so devout and religious to their specific ideal that they chose to. I'm a Republican. I stand behind that. And anything a Democrat has to say, they can go fuck themselves. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's bizarre. It, so that's, <laughs> You and I have had how many conversations? Countless. <laughs> Hour-long conversations Hour. where... Longer than hours. Yes. And we don't agree on everything. No. And that's what makes the conversation awesome. Right. Yeah. Because... You shouldn't want to go into any conversation and want to change somebody's mind. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> right. But if you can get where they're coming from, if you can develop some understanding, that's where true change comes from. 
you know, you and I have become far more like-minded yeah. from our conversations, not because I mean, you'll, we'll, we'll debate. Yeah. Neither but one it, of us can convince each other no, right or wrong. Never will. And that's right. fine. But that's where change comes from because now I'm like, man, okay, here's, here's this guy that I respect. We're having an educated conversation and he's saying educated things from a perspective I've never thought about. Mm-hmm. So I have to rationally, okay, you know what? I've never thought about that one. So now I have to put that into my brain. And that's where positive change happens. My, I have super, super right-wing friends. And they introduced me to their other friends like, oh, yeah, he's our Democrat friend. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not a Democrat. I don't, what the, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Why does that qualifier thrown in but, there? <laughs> but that is also like, to them, I might as well be because they're very conservative and as we've had conversation, like he and I will have conversations and I'm like now, I mean, he will, we, we agree on far more things than we disagree on. Yeah. And that's what a conversation does. Absolutely. Watching news. You don't need to put yourself out of your comfort zone. No, you don't need to challenge yourself or realistically change your beliefs because you're watching a news channel that's telling you everything you already believe it's yeah. self-assuring yeah. that's the issue we're not going to get away from it for the most part until people can go out and have conversations and disagree with people and not want to punch them in the face but it, we're not we're not challenged to do that anymore no what do you mean <clears throat> social media has taken away that need to interact with other people like you and I grew up in a small town. Yeah. We had limited choices of friends and people to interact with. So we didn't have social media to rely on. So if we went out as kids and we wanted to play, sometimes we played with some of the kids we didn't always, you know, think were, you know, the best caliber of friends to play with, but we needed someone the to play. The dirty kids. With. You can just say the dirty kids. We didn't call them the dirty kids. I, mean, I called them the dirty kids. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> The preps and discusses is what we used to call <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Like I mean, I, I guess I was a prep. Yeah. That's because, yeah, you guys would have been scuzzes, I suppose. <laughs> I, did I floated right in the middle. I was happy right in the middle. <laughs> Everybody knew I was right in the middle. It's great. It's great. No, but I mean. So you were a puzz? <laughs> yeah. Puzz. A puzz. <laughs> I was a perfect breed of both. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but I mean, in, in that limited sphere of interactions, you didn't get to pick and choose what interactions you had. If you, you know, go downtown for dinner or something, you know, you're getting served by someone you probably know and maybe don't agree with or whatever, but you have to interact with them. You you're forced to. Yeah. But in this day and age in social media, you don't have to leave your goddamn house. You can cultivate your own environment through any type of social media. You can get pictures, you can get videos, you can get conversations, quote unquote through people that you have hand picked to give you exactly what you feel you want to hear and you are not forced to challenge yourself you're not forced to interact with someone that you maybe don't want to interact with but probably need to you are not forced to challenge any of your opinions by expressing them to someone else you don't have to. You can cultivate your own little environment that you can live in comfortably, never be challenged, yeah. and just be in your nice, cushy little cloud and be happy. It's true. So yeah. basically people don't do don't like to do the hard thing. Right. And and we've talked about this numerous times on the podcast before about accountability. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to take accountability for shit anymore. No. No. And the social justice warriors and the people that, like you talk, you talked about in social media, they like to throw grenades from freaking yeah. miles away. But if you ever meet them in public, they'll be like meek cowards. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. They I mean, how many, s- how many times do you read about people saying things that you, you wouldn't say to anyone's face unless you were drunk as shit in a bar? Yeah, yeah. But that's the airing of dirty laundry all over social media now. I mean, it's. 25 years ago, would you have gone to a party and, and saw somebody and been like, or even today, you don't go, you don't walk into a party or a house party and just be like, Lane, I haven't seen you in so long. How are you? 
uh, well, I've got this terrible diarrhea and my <laughs> wife, I think, is running around on me. And one of my kids, I don't maybe isn't mine. And my uncles, you know, touched me weird when I was seven, you know, but these are the things we put on social media. Right. Did you just read my page. I might have. I don't know. I'm not on there. So but these are the things we put on social media. But that's also 25 years ago. Yeah. You wouldn't see somebody walking down the street, down the street, screaming, "I hate the president." Yeah, that person's a lunatic. Yeah, if they're walking down the street screaming, "I hate the president," regardless of who the president is. Like, it's changed the fiber of how we can behave. True. And why do we allow that? Why? I mean, why does that perpetuate? Why do we say, you know, this guy's got the saddest story? Why do we give him the front page? On social media, specifically, there's a lady that hops on and says, oh, my God, I stubbed my toe this morning and cats are dicks and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, yeah, I totally believe that, Stephanie. And you are just so right in thinking that way. And then anybody who thinks it differently is an asshole. And Because it's a narcissism machine. It's an affirmation machine. Yeah. It makes you feel good about yourself. And I mean, it's it's been proven algorithmically. They put people together who have the same ideas. Mm. So it's addictive to feel good about yourself and to feel like you're part of something. And it's scary. All right. Thanks and, everybody for showing us today. That's the end of the show. I mean, that's, <laughs> it is what it is. And it's scary. See that's, that's what it is. I mean, Jesus Christ, you just nailed it. It's a narcissism machine. It's yeah. somebody that, you know, feel sorry for me. Everybody just tries to jump on the the woe is me bandwagon. Oh, I got a sadder story than you. Oh my Absolutely. gosh. Today, oh my gosh, I feel sorry so bad for you. And then someone comes on and says, "Hey, why don't you just learn to tie your shoes <laughs> instead yeah. of tri tripping and falling down the steps every right. got every goddamn day?" And then the social justice warriors come in and just say, <laughs> "Why don't you just get a velcro? That guy's a dick for fucking blowing you up." <laughs> you know, it's. Oh, it's such an irritating thing. Cancel culture. And uh, it's it's funny because, you know, we try to be as decent as we can on this show because, you know, we're trying to build a presence. We're trying to put content out there. And we don't want to say anything that offends anybody, but you know what the fuck doesn't offend anybody? You can't anybody? say anything. <laughs> what the fuck doesn't offend anybody anyway? Right nowadays, so you know it's it's such a thing that it just bugs me. Going back to the the main point of facts versus feelings, this person offends me because they said cat hair in the wrong sentence <laughs> or the wrong way. So I'm gonna collectively gather my group of douchebags over here and we're going to assault them over the internet and try to get them off the air. And it just boggles my mind that people have become that way. But can I say something controversial? Go right ahead. <laughs> Cause I'll probably say you're absolutely right. Uh, to kind of put it simply, feelings are easier. Everyone is born with, emotions everyone has emotional capacity but to properly analyze a subject an opinion or something like that to gather the facts and rationally f go through them and arrive at a decent solution takes work yeah. it takes a little discipline it takes a little effort to get th those facts together and view them from different viewpoints not only your own but if I can just experience something and feel about it, I got it. I am upset about this. Done. I'm over. This is how I feel. And this is, this is where I'm going to stand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my flag in this ground right here, and I'm going to feel my way through this. But if you're looking for an answer or solution or you know, something that is really going to work, you've know, you, you got to do work. You've got to put some effort into it. But... We've seen it. You can see it in, in any kind of social media. It's just so much easier to put your feelings out there. And it's on the opposite side. It's wrong to attack someone's feelings. So to like, you know, to say, you know, get over it and figure out a solution that works. That's harsh. That's cold. That's 
it's, it's wrong. You can't do that. And so, I mean, we should, we should, we can look through history and realize that human, the human species is, is inherently lazy. I mean, has gotten inherently lazy. Well, it always has been. I mean, if there's an easier way to do things, we'll do it. Right. Oh, for sure. Right. And that's, that's the way the body is. Right. That's just the way it works. Yeah. And, but there are individuals who will figure out a way to do things better and make perhaps our lives easier. But, you know, I think the general population, if there's an easier way to do things, we're going to do it. And I, I, everyone's guilty of that. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think. It's well, I'm not, out. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My feelings are this way. Fuck you. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I, I don't think that it's. The laziness, or I don't think it's an. If there's an easier way, I think if it's there's a more acceptable way. Acceptable versus easier. What do you mean? So you go back to like serfdom in feudal England. Like those serfs worked their ass off. They weren't being lazy. They just accepted it because it's what what they were told. They were they had to do. It was it was accepted amongst everybody and it would have been harder to go against the grain and say you know what this isn't right okay i i can see that and i think that's where we are now i think there's more of a slavery to social opinion which there there's there's always been a slavery to social opinion people don't rock the boat i mean you look back at on historically who are the great people in the world? They're the people who were like, <laughs> fuck this. Yeah, we're go, changing some shit. They go against the grain. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's inherently laziness. I, I think it's just sheeple. Okay. I would agree with that. But I mean, in, in that, speaking in that the, definition, speaking to the microphone, I'm sorry. In that definition, isn't that, kind of laziness i mean you could well, change I mean, you could yeah. rock the boat yourself i guess you I, choose we, not we, to. We, we may be talking about just yeah. you know or yeah. dance around the same point just right calling it different i'm just saying it better okay fine <laughs> <laughs> i need to separate you two <laughs> not at all this is how our conversations okay. go yeah, but, I mean, to be fair, typically there's a few hundred miles. Right. Us, so <laughs> we can't hit each other. Yeah, this, usually. This, this. <laughs> I've got a hurt wrist. Just, yeah. just in I'm case nurse. I cry after I punch you. It's, it's not because okay. I like you. I'm nursing her wound right yeah. now. You're lucky. Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> all right. So let's change things up just a bit. Oh, all right. What is your least favorite accent in the human dialect? Ooh. least favorite isn't this question racist <laughs> i don't think so no because i really i i think boston <laughs> okay <laughs> Those fucking turns. just fuck them <laughs> what do you mean we talking about just the way they talk yeah i mean how do you like them apples yeah you know fuck you matt damon and ben affleck <laughs> just get out of here <laughs> oh God. Brady, <laughs> Belichick, Belichick. That's, that's just no. I mm. chowder, chowder, chowder. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I mean, oh. that, I mean, that crosses the line between New York and Boston, doesn't it? It's I mean, it's somewhere, in, but it's just yeah. East Coast, similar East yeah. Coast. D baggery. <laughs> I don't. Any, any, I don't. I, I any don't. Dialect you can't. I've never really con- considered it. God damn it, that's what I made you on this podcast to do, is to think. <laughs> I thought you were one of my ideas, damn it. Not an opinion on an arbitrary thing. Oh, These crap. are part of my silly questions. I know it. I know, I'm just buying you time. You're snapping off a piece of that Kit Kat bar right now. Can I, can, can I alter? <laughs> Sexiest accent. Ooh, uh, English. Britain. British? Yep, British. I love it's the British accent. incredibly vanilla. No, I love the British accent. Vanilla? Well, what's yours? What's your yeah. favorite section? Oh, something that I can't understand. I don't want to know what's happening ever. <laughs> oh, okay. I want I want the girl to be a complete mystery. It could be a Russian chick screaming at you. Or... <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Throw me some African clicks and, and that shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to be like, yes, ma'am. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you want me to do. Honestly, uh, Irish. 
is what? Irish is sexy because really? when you get someone who's like truly like heavy Irish accent, it's not English. You, they're not speaking English. Right. And you can't understand them, but you know you should, and it makes you feel bad about yourself. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> yes, and there, and that's the mystery. So, like, it, it so makes is, you feel bad if about you can, yourself. Yeah, I don't want you to feel bad about yourself. Yeah, I, I want you to slap my ass. So we went to the. the, 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 the and you, I'm just like, I want you to pinch my nipples. Yeah, it, it's, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, oh I want you to call me Charlie. But see, that's almost <laughs> Scottish. No, that's I mean, Irish. No, that's Irish. Irish. That was Irish. Yeah, no, you're you're but there. You're sounding like there. you're sound like Bono or something. <laughs> I, don't hear Bono I think, I think, it's, I think it's the man's right. tone. It's right. really like, just not doing it. Off. I yeah. can't do the woman's tone yeah. and also I, yeah. an Irish accent. <laughs> I, I can't do it either. But so you got nothing. You got no dialect. I, there's there. not one I hate. I mean, I, I think Russian sounds harsh, choppy. Yeah, and uh-huh. I've 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 told my wife who is Austrian and speaks German that the German accent is just horrible. Yeah, she starts screaming at you in German. It's, it's but her she speaks a dialect of Austrian. It's it's a German dialect, but it's Austrian. It's a lot smoother, so it's not nearly as harsh. But I tell her, you know, when we hear German accents, we hear anger, and they're just saying, "Oh, I, I like the way your hat looks," or something. But, but it's it very, sounds, it very sounds staccato. harsh. Yeah, it sounds harsh. Yeah, and so I mean. I don't want to say that my wife's accent, because her, her accent is not that bad, and, and I like it when she talks, but. <laughs> I could be sexist with the answer and say French on a man is bad, yes. but on a female's, fine. No, I get that. I would have to agree with I that. You know, that. It sounds so condescending and <laughs> fucking nose turning yeah. upward. <laughs> well, who do you think you are, uh, you little fucking, stupid American? Yeah, Kiss you peasant, you fucking yeah. big fucker, you. <laughs> you know that yeah i get that your get father that. smelled of elderberry <laughs> <Yes. laughs> i don't know that i have an accent that i i detest well you can't gripe at me for not having an opinion when you don't have one either well because i haven't given it much thought i've been trying to exactly trying apparently to i'm the only like, xenophobe yeah. who's thought about this at length blitz me with the question and then oh, i haven't thought about it either no, honestly, I haven't. There isn't any dialect I find uh, extremely sexy. I was going to say, that was my return question. You got one of those? Maybe Portuguese or Spanish? Really? Maybe. All right. You ever heard Penelope Cruz talk? So well, I'm, I'm, I'm not questioning it. I'm just saying, like, where's Port? Not many, not many people have listened to the Portuguese language. I'm, I'm just... Brazil speaks Portuguese. I know. I mean, it's a huge population, so I think a lot of people have listened. <laughs> but I don't think <laughs> there's many Portuguese people. Language. Out there. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's out there. It's I a tried, tiny country, but it's a huge <laughs> language. I tried listening. <laughs> I tried to learn Portuguese for a little while, but most people I don't think would pick up the difference. But um, All right, since you've got uh, no answer, I'll move on to the next I, question. I gave. I just gave up. Take a drink. Okay, whatever. <laughs> By the way, anytime the cuckoo clock dings or coos. Or whatever, cuckoos, whatever you want to call it. We've missed it twice. I know. But every time it cuckoos, we need to take a drink. All right. I might need more. So have you guys <laughs> heard of the, uh, the AMC series, The Walking Dead? Of course. I, yeah, I've watched like the first five seasons. Okay. Okay. So if given the option, would you travel into outer space? <laughs> <laughs> I missed a segue there. Repeat the question. <laughs> you heard right. <laughs> Do they go to outer space in The Walking Dead? I'm missing something. Not at all. All right. Funny side note. All have right. you ever turned your faucet on? Just so much pressure where you hear this. No, I have not. It's the air bubbles or the uh, the, the aeration coming through the uh, the faucet. Okay. Sounds exactly like The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Next time, we'll try it. We'll try it tonight. We'll, we'll do it tonight. Yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> I've wanted to make a uh, uh, a TikTok or a a Reels, uh, a Reels and, and say, has anybody else got The Walking Dead inside their faucet? Because it sounds exactly like the zombies from The Walking Dead. <laughs> so you watched The Walking Dead? I did up until like maybe season five, season yeah, six. Yeah, it got and stupid. And just got stupid. Yeah. It's like, okay, this show should have ended. But I'd like to go to outer space to answer your question. Sure, yeah. why not? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what if, sign me up. Well, what if it's, uh, like I was just listening to this on the way down here. Um, what if it's an Elon Musk uh, Tesla and you're the guy in the 
driver's seat and he launches you into outer space. What's what if the you're the guy that you what if you're the guy that he hates and he just says, Oh, it's a dummy <coughs> in the car, but we put a helmet on him, it's an actual man, and he was an enemy of mine that came up with a different system of electrical engineering and we shot him into space. Well, obviously being murdered is not my first choice. <laughs> right. But you know, I mean I'll if give I you guys options. If I if I didn't have a whole lot else going on <laughs> Like cool. it's it's on my bucket list, so I mean, we're gonna cross cool. one off. Sure, yeah. So which way would you guys go? Would you guys go up into the stratosphere like uh, Jeff Bezos and turn around, and come back, or would you actually like to go into outer space, experience the zero gravity, yeah. see the moon, or see the Earth from the atmosphere? Oh, no, absolutely. Then, yeah, I want to be up down. there for a little while. I I'll, I'll be honest. If I could put my affairs in order, I'd be on the first trip to Mars. Uh-huh. If I and obviously I'm not qualified, but if I was qualified and could put my affairs in order, I'd go. Yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. I know my wife has always said, you know, if there's alien life out there, she is more than willing to uh, volunteer to be taken off this planet and just see what's out there. God, she's like, such an adventurist. That one. <laughs> I guess I mean she came over here, experiencing a new, brand new country. She married you, basically sight unseen, right? Yeah. So odd, but she's always said, you know, "I want to know more. I want. I really want to know. You know, this this stuff here on Earth. It, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't mean shit. And I want to see what all of it's all about. And if there's an alien species out there and wants to take me away, come and get me. And be like, okay, I guess <laughs> we're not um, talking about an alien species coming to get you. We're talking about just our species saying, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm mean, you out of, out of our atmosphere." <laughs> to another planet if you survive good luck <laughs> good luck on you no i i if i it was up to me i i want to go to space i want to spend a few hours up there at least i don't just want to i mean at some point they're talking how that upper stratosphere uh passenger travel is going to happen just like tito believes that the uh planes go planes, up in the air and the earth planes moves. don't fly yeah they hover and the earth moves underneath them somehow underneath them all when you get to a certain altitude, you mean? Or? I mean, that happens truthfully. That's, but that's how he thinks that plane yeah, travel all works. Plane tra- all these planes flying in different directions, the Earth somehow rotates underneath them, and they all get to Who the right. Who thinks that way? <laughs> a buddy of ours. <laughs> yes. Um, I, we don't know if he thinks that way or if he just regurgitates shit that he reads right. online. Right. Is he, he's a, is he a, a flat Earth type person? Or? <laughs> well, so that's the thing. I've, I've challenged him because he's, he's brought up, well, they make good points. Is Who what does? he says. Who he does? goes, oh, no, they make good the flat points. Flat Earth people? Yeah. Flat Earth. But how can the Earth rotate? around things if it's flat right i'm well i guess like a record I suppose. which would actually make more sense with plane travel it that would yes shit <laughs> <laughs> i've made it. i've made his point for him he's never been able to argue that okay well bring it up to him i mean give him more ammo i'm not showing him this podcast oh, all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he needs to come up with that on his own all so right he thinks yeah. by shooting a plane up into so many feet into the sky that we just put it up there it can shut engine shut its engines off and wait until the earth comes around to the right spot and then the plane drops back down which doesn't have anything to do with north tra- north south travel right hmm. yeah he can't explain that as i say can you back that up can you explain <laughs> that or no <laughs> but Let's call can, him out. He's not here. Let's fucking beat him can, up on can, it. Can flat earthers explain anything? <laughs> right. You know, like no, because they see, they look out and they yeah. see a horizon. It's flat. They can see for a few miles and say, "Well, that's flat to me." Good enough. Yeah. Hmm. But no, the upper stratosphere that is true. If you launch a spacecraft up far enough, you can kind of wait a little while for the Earth to move under you and to come down much yeah. cheaper and faster. Yeah. So that will probably happen at some point. And they've talked about that before. But, you know, what's the point of that? I want to go up into space, experience weightlessness, see beyond, you know, I want to get a better perspective of not having the Earth right right below me. I want to back up a little bit, see the Earth in relation to the sun, other planets possibly, you know, see what I can see up there. That would yeah. be a lot more fun. Do you want to see the government installations on the dark side of the moon? Hell yeah. I do too. Yeah. Goddamn Star Wars freak. <laughs> No, that was that was a Transformers thing. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> There's a new movie about that. Yeah. Which, which Moonfall uh, or something? I yeah. I might go see it this week just because Moon something Halle Berry and Moonfall. Yeah, I think it's called it Moonfall? Moonfall. Okay. Don't judge me. What's I'm that not about? judging. I'm What's just... that about? 
Uh, the, they go to the moon and there's something there. Alien, aliens, aliens planted something on the moon that's going to waken or something. Or and, it's like moving the moon towards us yeah, or something. something. I don't know. It, yeah. I mean, it sounds terrible. But NASA was actually involved in the making of the movie. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because. Tell me that. Well, if you put it in the movies, then, it's, then it, it can't be true. That's the thing. That's what they want you to think. Exactly. Bam. Right. Yeah. Segue into my last oh. my last guest that I had on podcast. I talked about this earlier with you. Which one? I had a guest on who uh, who told me <laughs> that everything in the movies was basically influencing my thought process. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> You've seen too many movies. I've seen too many movies, apparently, because I believe that a a person brought up in a gang mentality or a kill or be killed mentality or kill all for the benefit of the gang would go to jail and just cease to exist, magically disappear. He wouldn't influence gang activity inside that prison cell or prison area or influence anything outside of the prison itself. Which is completely, if you've watched any documentary on gang life inside <laughs> prison and or gangs that go into prison or a person from a gang that goes into prison and is welcomed with open, open arms with people that are in prison, I was basically told that like, you've seen too many movies. That's, that doesn't real. That's not, that's yeah. not true. And I didn't call the guy out on it and I gratefully regret it, but he was a guest on the show and I had to just kind of. So his belief is that somebody is raised in that environment and goes to prison and then just like stops rehabilitated just done like they just no they just, walk they walk through the doors and just yeah they disappear from the face of the earth basically i'm done I don't, i'm not doing that anymore they have no influence over right. anything else but do they get out of prison oh heck no they've killed so many people and they've done oh so many, okay 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 they've done so many horrible things that they're not getting out so they just go in and then they just disappear <laughs> and there's no gang life in prison absolutely not oh. we pay we pay for them to exist but <laughs> They have no influence on the outside world or the world that they're a part of now. So all the influences that brought them to where they are today evaporate and they've just become a human being inside a containment container. <laughs> Damn it. This opens up another topic of conversation for me. <laughs> Do it. But Do it. No, Go like, there. So for the for-profit, like prison system, uh -huh. our prison system, for-profit prisons, what do you, what do you think? I hate them <laughs> what do you mean yeah. what do you think they're bullshit yes, they're like, stupid but how do we get away from that in this country they're mechanisms for business i mean they're a business so how, so how do we get away from it do we raise taxes and, and make it a government issue or or something we fund yeah Oops. go ahead i hate them i hate them but oh, i haven't given it a ton of thought but all right I'll... we're pretty deep into them right we're balls deep into them. I asked, I'll, I'll bring up this. I asked this guy, what do you feel about the death penalty? And he says there's more money to be made or more money to be spent on killing a person than keeping them in the prison system for the rest of their life. It, it, co it costs more to kill a person than keep more. them in the prison for that long. I've heard this. And it, uh, I've never done the research into it, but I've heard that argument. Really? It sounds dynamically stupid. Right. It sounds completely contrary to what my understanding would think. My understanding is that it's the appeals that typically take place. Okay. As far as a cost perspective? Yes. I Like the, the court appeals and because you'll have third parties come in and try to petition on behalf of people and there's things like that which i think is a fundamentally flawed part of our court system then if we're mm -hmm. allowing third parties to come in i didn't <laughs> but i've only done limited sure. but that is the arg i've heard this argument that is the argument is that the appeals process costs more money which i don't know but okay. also if the u.s government isn't paying to house these people because they're for-profit prisons that argument can be made. It costs the taxpayer more to put a person on death row because it doesn't cost the taxpayer anything for a person to go to a prison that's making money off the person being there for life. The, the, the for-profit comes from the government, though. The government pays for that stuff. 
that's where the profit comes from. That's where we're outsourcing. Like it's not the government that's in control of prisons. It's a private company that gets yeah. the money from the government, which right. comes from our taxpayers. No, I get that. Right. That's the profit right. part. But, but I guess it's the, the money is less. Where? The, I, my, again, I'm not. The money I'm, is less to not kill the person. The argument is that the money is they pay less to not kill the person because it's basically just out of sight, out of mind, rather than all of the appeals and all, and, and bullshit. Uh, I'm not saying I agree with this. I can this kind of the, see that. This is the argument when, when they say that. That's the argument they make. Okay. I've not researched it. I'm just giving that perspective. That but, I can understand. I mean couple million dollars after going through three freaking appeals to a guy who you know there's a slight chance maybe he didn't do it or something i i can see that i'm not opposed to the death penalty i it's one of those things though like man there's a lot of innocent people that have been put to death true that's that's the fault that's the problem yeah that's what he brought up to the to the talk was that you know but to me, when I posed to him that the person was dead to rights on video, <laughs> snapping the girl's neck after he Dude. raped her. Yeah. And he's like, well, it's still an innocent person you're putting to death. You know, there's people. False. In, Where? Yeah. <laughs> there's people behind me that are his family that are just beside themselves with grief that he is all of a sudden <laughs> put to death. I'm like. And I didn't no. challenge him on it yeah. past a certain point, but you know, what about the person that he just raped and killed? Right, absolutely. Yeah. So, if there's on camera doing that shit, you know, you're done. Yeah. Done. Get out. Yep. Sorry, you don't. You and you don't even get circuit. an appeal. You know, let let's no. just let's cut this off. Right. Like, no more appeals. Yeah. For for that shit, you are cut and dry. And and that's what his case was. You know, where do you where do you stop the cut and dry? You know, if he's, you know, there's, he said, you know, so many people have been put to death, put to death that are innocent. And it's like, okay. How many um, of those people have been caught on camera? Exactly. And yeah. I said, that was the next question was video evidence. Yeah. So I got video evidence of this guy that comes in, does X, Y, and Z, and kills a person. And you've got it right there. Hook, line, and sinker. You keep him around. And he pretty much told me that, you know, this like I said before, the guy that comes in kills people. That's all he does. He's been caught doing it several times, and he's gotten off and comes back, and he's done it again. What do you do with him? Well, you know, he's still a human being. <laughs> like, fuck, he's a demon. No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At some put point, him, the human being status gets yeah, revoked. put him off the earth. <laughs> yeah. He is taking human lives, and you're willing to keep him around for what purpose? <laughs> End it now and put him away. I'm with you on that. If yeah. there's, yeah, I mean, if there's, undisputable, I, undisputable, yeah. yeah, we can't can't hold it to just video evidence because they're coming out with some incredible fake video software and shit that we're not going to be able to trust that no, shit. But anymore sure, either. but like if it's, <laughs> I'm not yeah. talking about a YouTube video that was doctored. No, no, somebody. no, I know that, but I mean, no, but if I stab you in the face and and there's five people and, saw Lane, it. and Lane's like, hey, I, I I saw him do it. <laughs> Even then, I'm not sure that's enough. Right. But if I walk out that door and the police are standing right there and there's like <laughs> news crews yeah. and I walk out that door and I'm like, I've still got the knife in my hand yeah, and it's blood dripping and, down your arm. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I didn't mean to kill him. And, you know, and, or I didn't do it. Yeah. Or I didn't. <laughs> man, what? And, you know, no. Right. <laughs> End it. I'm with that. You're with that. Hell yeah. Okay. I mean, indisputable evidence. I don't, I don't want to limit it to just, you know, whether we've got video, but, you know, I'm saying. If there's indisputable evidence, you know, credible tons of witnesses, whatever. And Ron White has a joke where Texas enacted some kind of law like that. You know, you don't get those appeals. You don't get that. You, he said, my state's putting in a, an express lane for the death penalty. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay, I can agree with some of those laws. You know, if it's indisputable that yeah, you did it, you you need to go. I'm fine with that. But he also went on further to say that. The death penalty will not deter people from doing the crime. No. No. Just like any law doesn't stop Does you life from... in prison deter you? Right. No. Yeah. No, See? you got a you got a place to sleep and something to eat. Yeah. yeah. You I got mean, your, your buddies around you. Here's the thing. Somebody who's going to kill somebody, 
Well, so let's let's ask this. That well, I guess that's different types of murder. <laughs> Bring up different penalties. Yeah. Because killing someone in the heat of passion, or for whatever reason, manslaughter. Manslaughter. You know, you, like right. you're drunk and you drive and kill a family of four. Well, so I've got a daughter. Somebody hurts my daughter in an irredeemable way. If the authorities don't get to that person before I do, I'm going to kill the person. Hey, man, brother. You know? Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Do I think I'll serve time in prison for that? Do I think I need to be killed? Again, it's, it's, I would die. You know, I mean, that's one of those things. I would die for my daughter. So I'm not, right. but right. if somebody, if I saw somebody else do that, do they need to be put to death? crime of passion you know i don't know but when you're talking premeditated this yeah. is where we need to get into the if it's somebody who's killed 16 people <laughs> you know he's <laughs> we, we've he's got their heads in his refrigerator <laughs> you know we find him eating out of one of the skulls <laughs> yeah. right right you know that guy just needs to die sure. he just needs to be gone he doesn't need any more chances but what if you keep him around and study him and just keep study him what like uh, Charlie Manson. Oh, he's so freaking nuts. Let's just keep him around and talk to him further and see what he has to say. Wasn't Charlie Manson spared because the death penalty was illegal in California at that time? Was it? Uh, yeah. I thought he didn't commit any of the actual murders. He just convinced other people to do it for him. Well, he didn't commit the murders, but right. I think he was he was charged for capital crimes. Okay. Let's say he. But I think right. that they couldn't figure out exactly. I think the death penalty we... was not legal in California when he was convicted. Okay. I've done my studies on Charlie Manson. Right. I really haven't, but <laughs> sounds creepy when people say that. So. It, it wasn't our list of things to just bone up on before this podcast. <laughs> so. You got a list of things? I give I give you no <laughs> list of things. Right. I was going to say, man, I'm, I'm shooting from the hip here. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is something I really wanted to talk to you guys about. So talk to me about tolerance. Okay. At what point do you stop being tolerant of a certain behavior or action and force that person to tolerate your response to that action? I'd never force somebody to tolerate my response. Ooh, explain. If I can't tolerate someone, I just remove myself from the situation. That's, that's usually my response, too. But well, what if it has taken over the world? I mean, basically, cancel culture has taken over the world. If they don't like the way that you're serving eggs <laughs> at 7 a.m. in the morning, they will form a fucking committee and a group to assault your business and get you shut down. Okay, that's that's a little different than tolerance, I think. Uh, what What the cancel culture is doing is that you have to see the world their way. And I don't think that's necessarily tolerance. That's do what I tell you to. I think that's more of coercion or uh, it seems much more forceful than just drink. Do what the cuckoo clock drink. Oh, sorry. Thanks for being my There we go. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Tolerance, I view as, you know, do what you want with you and yours, leave me and mine alone. Um, as long as it's not harming me, not bothering me, I, I don't give a shit what you do. Okay. So Go the, ahead. The basis of the question is, so what if that they're pushing everything they believe on you? That's it. That's coercion. That's not tolerance. That's coercion. Like, view the world the way I see it, God damn it. And I, I don't have to do that. That's not up to me. And I shouldn't be forced to view that way i can i can do what you and i do all the time is look at it from a different perspective see how it might affect you or me or someone else and say okay yeah i can adopt that point of view and i can adjust my behavior more in line with the way you're looking at it. but you can't force me to view the world you want me to view it as that's coercion that's just pushing your views on something you, that drives me up a freaking wall and i'm our mom has told me before that I am one of the most tolerant persons there is. I can tolerate just about anything, but I cannot tolerate stupidity. Yeah. And that's 
that's pretty much stupidity is where I draw the line. I, I can't stand someone who's just being stupid. And, you know, someone pushing their beliefs on me is not necessarily stupid or anything, but it's stupid to imagine that you can force me to change my mind to view the world that you want me to view it just by pushing me in that way, canceling me, whatever. I mean, I'm not a celebrity. You can't cancel me anyway. No, <laughs> I mean, how, how are you going to cancel me? I cancel me from, you know, leaving my house two or three times a week to go get wood supplies. What? <laughs> Bark at me on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, what? Oh, it's tough. I don't pay attention to that shit anyway. So I, I can't be canceled necessarily. So that doesn't bother me, but it's, I don't think what you're, you're describing as tolerance is it's more coercion than anything else. How you push back against that. Yeah. You don't buy into it. You don't, like, well, no, keep you, saying what you're saying. I mean, there's going to be, I think there's enough okay. people who are going to listen to you anyway. That I think the cancel people will eventually move. They'll find an easier target. They'll find someone else that will listen to them or, you know, well, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I mean, as long as you're not saying something radically stupid and intolerant and just dumb. Well, let me, let me pose this then. How about the, the man that wants to be identified as a woman that goes into the woman's restroom and is urinating in the same place as your young daughter when really he has an ulterior motive. You don't know that. You don't know if he does or he doesn't. And it could be just a woman trying to, or a man trying to gender identify himself as a woman and trying to transition into a woman, which is completely fine. Do as you sure see fit. No problem with that whatsoever. Nope. But, it's the same thing as them trying to go in and just <clears throat> smack you on the face with the microphone. No, <laughs> this is me. This is me. This is identify me. Exactly. It's like, okay, well, you know, you're going in there not just to go to the bathroom. You're looking to see a little girl's privates. You're looking to do something else. So that's that's the idea I'm trying to Okay propagate here is that you need to tolerate me because I am a man trying to identify as a woman but I'm going in and I'm secretly doing this <laughs> on the side that's a completely different thing but <clears throat> I think we're seeing that play out like there's a is it Loudon, Virginia or something like that they let a, a biological male who is identifying as a girl into the girl's restroom and he assaulted two different girls on two different occasions and it has now become the hotbed of the country for this kind of discussion and i'm not here to say a man is this a female is this this should be this and this should be that but we have to put some rules in place that say until this line has been crossed and and this has been identified and we have defined this to be, you know, gender, sex, whatever you want to call it. These are the rules. I'm not here to say what those rules should be, but that discussion needs to be had. And, you know, smarter people than I should make those determinations, but I would not feel comfortable for someone who's transitioning or wants to identify, I don't give a shit what you identify as. If you want to be a person who is different than everybody else, rock rock on, man. I yeah. Be whoever you want to be. Yeah. Identify as whatever you want to identify as. Call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. That's awesome. But don't force that into a sphere that might affect other people. And this kid or guy, whatever you want to call him, went into the girls restroom and assaulted two girls two different girls and they tried to cover it up and like they wanted to be so politically correct and accepting and, and whatever and like n- no that's that line should have been drawn before that happened yeah. and i'm saying i'm not the one to draw it but that line needs to be drawn i don't know if sex or gender is the proper yeah i don't, I don't know which one is I, I don't either. which but no, I completely agree. Um, if you want to go through the motions and change it, uh, Jenner, like yeah, Caitlyn Jenner, woman, okay, sure, go to the ladies' room, 
Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Whatever you, whatever you want to no, do. No, no. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to, if you want to do that, go through the process and do it legally. Because there are legal things. I, you know, I don't, I would never do it, but I don't. Are you getting up? Would you grab me a beer? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Appreciate it. While you're talking, I will serve the group. There Just are. A little bit of honey, too. <laughs> yeah, there's just. The, laws exist for a reason. And I don't agree with all laws. Oh, no. But there are natural laws. And if our medical science and our technology can change those, that's fine. But until that change is complete, you live by the law you're born in. Yeah. And it's the same with sports. Like, yeah, absolutely. You know, you can't just jump and say, hey, I identify as a female. I identify as a female, and now I'm going to win the shot put in the Olympics. Yeah. You know, that's... Here's the thing. If you if you do identify as a female, and, and that's... Man, that sucks. But life sucks for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. There are people who want to have kids and can't naturally conceive. Yeah. That sucks. You know, our medical science has gotten to progressive places where we can move around that, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to go through those procedures to do it. Right. And that's, yeah, life, life is shit and it's not fair. And we need to get rid of the participation trophies and all of that bullshit. And not everything is going to be peaches and cream. You're away. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that goes back to the point. I can't remember now because I'm buzzed, but (laughs) Not just accountability. Not everything is peaches and cream. You're you're you are in life. You are dealing with everything and all the problems that are dealt to everybody. You know, you're dealing with time. You're dealing with circumstances. You're dealing with events. You're dealing with things that are gonna change your perspective. Um, I just heard this the other day, but I am a. I am the. Um, the effect of time and circumstances. That's who I am. Yeah. And that applies to everybody. Right. You know, it was such a profound statement. It just hit me. I'm watching Boardwalk Empire. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the guys, one of the guys, one of the characters, Jimmy, whatever his name was, said it. Says, you know, you're a son of a bitch or you're a bad son or something like that. And it's like, no, I'm the effect of circumstances and time. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's affected differently. But for you to force your agenda and or your life perspectives on other people to try to fit your life and your perspectives, it just doesn't make sense. Everyone's trying to do everything great that they feel. And not everyone is going for the same goals. Not everyone is going for the same things. Right. And for you to step in front of somebody else and say, you can't do this because I feel I deserve this, but I haven't done anything for it. I feel like I'm going on a tangent here and it doesn't make any sense, but <laughs> anyhow. I think uh, what you're saying is that at some time, everyone, everyone has to deal with shit. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to deal you with shit. You gotta deal with it. You can't say it's, it's not my problem. Yeah. I was, I was dealt this hand. And I can't do anything about it, so it's somebody else's problem. Somebody else needs to take take, take care of this for me. You can't pass it off someone else. It, sometimes deal with your own shit. Yeah. So it's accountability. I was yeah. born with a very hairy chest. I identify as a <laughs> man with no chest hair. Okay. Um, I'm unwilling to have a medical procedure to remove my chest hair. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so what, do want, what do you want me to do about it? Well, any woman, tolerate it, Ryan. Any woman who is not <laughs> attracted to men with chest hair, all right, still needs to sleep with me, okay? Because I identify as a hairless man. Okay, we'll we'll pass that around. And see how I understand that that is like <laughs> I'm I'm being it's oversimplified, but yeah, we get it. Yeah, I'm, basically, but that's no, right? We don't live in those times, right? Well, we do live in those times, apparently. But <laughs> We shouldn't. Uh, yeah, we shouldn't. It's it's getting a little out of hand. 
I'm really glad I didn't say on the podcast that I have a hairy ass. <laughs> you just did. I know. <laughs> hey, high five from across the six foot table. There it is. There it is. <laughs> hey. It is the it is the Amazon jungle, the Amazon rainforest. My oh ass. My God. <laughs> What is it? What's the quote? What's the uh, quote? Shrek and the swamp are fighting over whose whose swamp is theirs and my ass right now, or something like that. <laughs> I've, <never heard laughs> no. that. I've heard it, but I don't remember the quote. <laughs> <laughs> I probably just fucked it up. But um, let's see. I'm gonna pose you guys this question, and then I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Okay. Oh, what we get, we get to take over the podcast for like five yep. minutes. Five minutes. Don't oh say anything stupid because I'm not going to see it. I'm just going to fly through, and if everything's good, all right. It's just going to be this little. <laughs> it's going to be like Fight Club when he inserts that dick pic inside the middle. Of, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. In the middle of a family family cartoon family show. <laughs> um, who or what would you consider be your own personal nemesis, a long time standing enemy or downfall? Um, who or what? I mean, what would you, what would be, what would you consider your nemesis? Like alcohol is my nemesis or Peter Gabriel is my nemesis or what Peter Gabriel do to you. Jeez. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to leave that in your hands. I'm going to take a whiz. Fantastic. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Don't no dead air. All right. I'm, uh, <laughs> I may have one for this. All right. I may have a person one. or a thing. A, th- a thing. Okay. And, and we talked about it earlier. All right. R- briefly, when we were upstairs. Sure. Um, I think my Catholic upbringing. Really? You count that as your nemesis? I am racked with guilt. <laughs> Almost daily. Oh, I, I can't say something. I mean, I can say shit to you, and I'm just like, yeah, fuck you. Deal with it. Right. But I've, I've earned the right in my mind to yeah. say that to you. And likewise you would with me, right. but there's a constant, a insecurity where just I'm neurotic sometimes about like, well, okay. If, if I ask this girl out, like, is she going to feel guilty about saying no? And then like, what if what if i see her again you know what would happen then and the okay. guilt that i feel about ask potentially asking a girl out because i don't want to make her feel uncomfortable okay on the off chance that we ever may see each other <laughs> in the same bar again is like debilitating to me sometimes wow all right and that's that's an extreme example it's sure. happened <laughs> it's happened but it's also like i know like i I wish that I had not been raised with just that aspect. And my, my parents are great. Like the, sure, none of yeah. us are Catholic anymore. Like it's not that, but yeah. that would be my nemesis. I, I think that's a big part of my, a yeah, big part of my psyche. Okay. Stems from that. All right. I'll accept that. I mean, I never would have Good. guessed. I never would have guessed. Good. That. Well, what do you think it is? <laughs> My hairy chest, you piece of shit. Thanks hey, for I, that I'm, back up. I'm a master of the callback. That's probably what I've gone to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I I have actually considered this kind of question to myself before. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And is it your Iron Man good looks? No, it's is not. Is your nemesis? No. Okay. I don't, cons- Stark. I don't <laughs> yeah. consider myself to be that <laughs> dynamically handsome. God. Um, but I, I think my greatest nemesis is myself. I, no, I do. I, I overthink myself. I question myself. I, I go way too far in analyzing what I do and don't do and my options and everything else, it's almost analysis to paralysis. But why is that? I something, something don't know. That. Yeah. Why is that? Like, that's what I'm, that's I've what I'm noticed, saying about me. Yeah. yeah okay. I've noticed that with you for yeah. so no, num- so many number of years. Sure. You, you, I mean, you think yourself, 80. You, <laughs> <laughs> just my ass. <laughs> My watch is dead, but I this, can't even this always this always happens when Austin gets around other people. How old are you, bitch? God damn it! And it just it's just 
insane jealousy. He looks younger than me, and he's older than me, it's, and it's it hurts. It's, it's, it's insane. Hurts. Yeah. yeah, you both look very young, and it pisses me off. <laughs> it's all that healthy living. I say, how old are you? Don't ask. <laughs> I'm almost forty. Yeah, he's younger than he's younger than both of us. I say, yeah. forty three. But anyway. You've always talked. You've always talked and or thought yourself into a circle. Yes, complete freaking circle. Yes, and then you talk yourself out of so many things. Yes, and the only the best answer I can come up with is that it's it's an analysis of opportunity cost. To where if I put all my energy into this thing and I become great at it, which I think there's a lot of things I could do really well. I don't just I just, I don't know what I could be great at. There's a lot of things I could do really well, but I I don't know what great is. But at the same time, if I'm, if I get to be a certain level of good with this one thing, what if I pick the wrong thing, and I could have been great at this other thing? And it's it's this perpetuating cycle of oh, I could be good at this, I could be good at this, and could be good at this, and good enough, or you know, society's level of of you know, good enough. Like you're we were talking earlier, just just put it out there. Yeah, someone will pick it up. Yep. And like I could do that with so many things, but at the same time, I'm missing out on doing something that, you know, something could earn me a million dollars. Well, something could earn me ten million dollars. What if I do the million dollar one and I could have missed out on the ten million dollar one? And so but I'm your constantly... problem is that you're not acting on either. Right, and that's that's which exactly. is like the inherent flaw. Like uh, opportunity yeah. cost is one or the other. Right. You're you telling me MBA, shit. You're you telling me MBA. shit. I already know. You have an MBA. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> like you have to pick one, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's where. That's why I find myself in this fucking quagmire of shit. What do I do? And it. It. it you're. You're exactly right. I just. Tur- it turns into a gigantic circle, and yeah. I never break the circle. I'm stuck in a goddamn NASCAR race, and I don't cross the finish line. I, so it's, call your brother. Call me. I we'll do make the decision yeah. for you. <laughs> right. Yeah, we'll do it for you. I don't yes. trust either one of you to pick the right answer. <laughs> God damn it. Take your headphones off and walk away. Austin. Let's... Yeah. There we go. We flipped a coin. <laughs> Heads or tails. Yeah. My God. <laughs> There's more opportunity lost to indecision than there is oh, to I know. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. But it's it's something that's stuck in me, and I've tried to break the cycle. I've, I mean, I thought our book was a break the cycle moment. We didn't have any financial success with it or anything, but I mean, I I love that moment. I love that we Says made the, the guy who controls all the finances of it. I, I'll turn over my books. There's nothing to. Be I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> tell the until the show, and then bam. Yeah. But yeah, now you've I got mean, a scoop. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I thought that was a break the cycle moment. And I'm, I'm I'm happy that I made that leap with you, and it was awesome. But I mean, it it still happens. I still go back and forth. I still find myself yeah. talking myself into a goddamn circle. And I, I don't know how to break it. Well, it's a tough decision because you just have to say, all right, using your logical mind as you do, which is not necessarily a fault, No, yeah. but you need to use your logical mind and say, okay, how can I make money from this? Or what's the best outcome I can make from this? And just follow that route. Yeah. Instead of saying, well, no, I could make money from this, but... And then you right. start to... And there you go. Full circle around. Yeah. You just have to follow that and take off and just try it. Yeah. And it's it, it still comes back. I mean, I can look back on things I decided or tried to decide two or three years ago. I was like, damn it. If I had just put my head down and done this thing for two or three years, I'd be in this position right now. But no, I'm still stuck in the same fucking circle. Yeah. Going back, oh, I got, well, I could have done that, but now I can do this. And it, just, it, it goes back and forth, back and forth, and I, Jesus. Well, and the other option is, like you're saying, you know, it's what's going to make me the money. Think Wall Street and just do a massive amount of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? And what? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Like, it, you will make a decision. <laughs> a decision will be made. And I will attack it with fervor and energy. Exactly. <laughs> until the cocaine runs out. <laughs> it may be the wrong decision, but a decision will be made. <laughs> so, see, mm. and that's why I don't go and ask you. For <laughs> I don't do you have cocaine. What do you mean? He gave you an, a viable option, <laughs> true, to follow. Right. <laughs> it's my fault for not taking it. <laughs> yeah. I mean. It worked for a lot of people for decades. Yeah. I know. People had a good time. That's yes. Right. You're going to have a good time. Gonna yes. Have a good time. You're not going to outlive the cocaine at your advanced age. 
dear back God. to the right, right back to the advanced stage. Yep, I have to. The only one worse than that, worse than you at that, is Shelby. Well, Shelby will watch this. I'm so sure he will. To Shelby, shout out to Shelby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who is uh, Diego or Jesus or uh, Tito. Tito? Tito. There you go. We're not going to tell Tito about that. <laughs> <laughs> Does Tito have some great insights? I should have him on the show. What's the deal with Tito? If you can get him talking, he would be an incredible guest. Yeah. You'd have to get him, like, Three without eating. He can't eat before he drinks. Yeah. But also, he can't drink too much before he eats. He's like a gremlin. Jesus Christ, he sounds like a gremlin. Yeah, yeah, it's, it really is. We that's He's our gremlin. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of rules to get prime Tito. <laughs> yeah. He's always fun. He's always nice. He's yes. genial. But yes. but to get him into rare form, you have to like this perfect cocktail of you know timing and you know. Well, every human being is that way. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Me, it's you know have put a couple of cocktails in me and I'll start you know yeah, spouting all kinds of crazy shit. Running them off at the mouth. Yeah. That's like I said the other week. Uh, you never know what's going on in Ryan's mind until you ask. Until you ask. <laughs> or feed him cocktails. All right. Just as a throw out. Okay. This summer we could maybe do the pup crawl. Oh yeah, I've been thinking about that. Get Lane up there. I'll host you for a podcast and we'll have Tito as a guest. There you go. Oh, you man. can have Tito as a guest. Oh my Jesus. Yeah. What is that's gonna be in a hotel room? <laughs> we'll do it at my house. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. I miss the pub crawls. Those were a good time. I know, Those I, were fun. We were talking about it the other time. I was like, we, we really should do that again. I was like, I've really been thinking about it. I proposed starting on campus and ending yeah. in Lafayette so that way. I don't get oh, okay. antagonized by TD trying to walk across the well, bridge. AKA no, border. more like fraternity guys yeah. asking me why I'm old and then Harry's at 3 a.m. And right. yeah, I'll stand by you. I don't mind fan. I don't mind fraternity guys. <laughs> I, I'm not judging fraternity guys. I've got no. fraternity friends. But I'm just saying. They're the lippy ones. They're the lippy ones. <laughs> they get territorial. Like I said, yeah. I don't mind the fraternity guys. They get territorial, and I I, I will. Listen, dude. I'm on a pub crawl. What your old balls doing? Oh, just. I, I, mm, it just makes me. Hey, so my- after after nine hours of drinking, that's yeah, right. that's when I'm <laughs> right. maybe a little less. I'm less tolerant, sure. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna make somebody tolerate Wait, my what'd shit. What'd you just say? What'd you say to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when stacks closed down, did, did the fraternity guys go to Harry's? Then is that what happened? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg, is that where Harry's. he went? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because Harry's wasn't traditionally much of a fraternity place. It was an everybody go place. No, it was the last time. The last time I remember Greg saying that his fraternity brothers came into town. The fishbowl upstairs. Yeah. It's just a little. Have you been to Harry's? Oh, yeah. He's, he's been to the okay. Bowl. So yeah. the, the fishbowl, the booth yeah. area, <clears throat> they paid like $500 to the kids that were sitting there so that they could have it. Oh, God. Because it's that much of a. Oh, whatever. You know. I mean, there were 10 of them, so it was 50 bucks a piece, but what? Just to sit. Have their own space. And that... Just to show that there was a mass amount of occupancy in the room or what? Well, no, just because they wanted to sit in, in that one booth area. With their boys. With their guys. So because it was like a VIP kind of. You yeah. pay for to it. To them. That's, that's what they felt like. And it was just random kids sitting there, and they were like, you know... Well, can we have this? We used to we used to go to school here fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, and okay. so they paid for it. We got and, that and, spot, right? And the kids are like, "Yeah, no, we're sitting here." And they're like, "We'll give you five hundred bucks," and the kids are like, "Uh, fuck yes," because <laughs> right, they're poor college kids. <laughs> so, like, so there's ad- nothing wrong with it. No, it's no. Like adults want to spend their money, and college kids want to take their money. So yes, no problem in there. Yeah, right. But it becomes it's now become a territorial place oh. at Purdue. Okay. Seriously, with, with you fraternities, pay, you had to pay for your seats. You walk no, in there and that that was just the th- example. That's, that's one example, but it's it used to. You remember stacks, though. That's what yeah. you're asking. Yeah, there was a time and a place where, when I was not, I mean, I was a townie. I lived in Lafayette, was not in college, and I followed one of the most beautiful women I've ever met in my entire life. Her and I went into stacks. She was a coworker, and within 
I got to say two minutes of being in there. I was asked, what house are you in and yeah. why are you here? Oh God. And that's, that's kind of the issue with the Greek life at Purdue. Yeah. And it, I think it's gotten better. I, I think it's, I think it's gotten just far more whatever, but that's, that's the way it was. And it, it was insane. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was a bar towards the end of the crawl before he got to Jake's called the Yacht Club, and that was where all the fraternity people went. So the Greek people, fraternity, sororities, whatever, they all hung out there. And whenever I took my pub crawl in there, I'm not sure if you were able to go there when that was part of the pub crawl because it closed down. That was never on the pub crawl when I was on. Okay, yeah. Pubs. So it came after so, you. So yeah. yeah so I think I wouldn't have gone. I would have skipped. Yeah. It wasn't a great place to go in because we went in there with, you know, I got my 20 people or whatever, and we got dirty looks. Douchebags! Right. And we're like, fuck you, we're hammered. We're here to buy, you know, a drink apiece, and we'll, be, we'll be out of your hair in 15 minutes. But they didn't, oh, man, we got so many just funky looks and just, it mm. was just this elitist. You Not know, me, you're my friend. In, yeah, you're in our place. Not me. I was like... <laughs> I didn't care. It's like, I'm getting my drink. I'm having a good time and I'll see you fuckers later. I don't care. Oh, shoot. <laughs> but yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't lose any sleep over that place closing down or something. It was like, oh. yeah, who cares? Purdue's campus bars have a tendency to be a little feisty, but there's only like four. Yeah. They've all like, and they're so congested right there. Yeah. So I think that's the other thing. What? I think these young college guys, you know, they're amped up on testosterone. And, oh, yeah. They don't get any you know, ass. They're pissed. It's 3 a.m. <laughs> yep. You know. Get out of my way. I'm the, 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 yeah. The girls are gone, you know, and the ugly ones that are left are going home with not them. <laughs> yep. And they're like, now nah, we're going to start a fight with right this up. old man because yep. we can take him. He's got a brace on his arm. Dude, I feel like I should walk with you hand in hand and just like. Walk through these sea of douchebags. I just, I, f I feel like you're being bullied. Oh, I don't care. I've I gotten do. in fights. Yeah, I, I do. I've that bothers my, me. Oh, I've gotten in fights by. I've gotten my ass kicked by so many dudes. No, it would be you the other way around. Yeah, you wouldn't get your ass kicked. Well, I ain't sick no, around. That's, that's not fair. <laughs> just to walk through and be older, and then just be like, oh, I'm drunk. I'm not getting any pussy tonight. And I'm gonna fuck you with fucking old guy because he's older. than I don't me. think they're trying to fuck me. No, fuck just, with, just fuck with. Okay. Fuck with. All yeah, right. With. Just, just to make it clear, they've got energy to expend. They didn't expend it on sex. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm being an ass. All right. But no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm. I can hold my own. Oh, I believe you can. Yeah. I, I can, just welcome the opportunity. I yeah. can take like three or four punches, and then <laughs> and then I get really pissed, <laughs> and then I get angry, <laughs> and, and then I just like blindly more. start Hay throwing makers. haymakers. So just <laughs> give me like a five foot berth like if yeah. we get into this fight because i don't want to accidentally you know friendly fire maybe strike you and then it yeah. would distract you because it wouldn't hurt you hey yeah hey. but you'd be like what was that yeah it, it'd be terrible so no oh everybody cuckoo drink. cuckoo <laughs> for those listening it's four in the morning now <laughs> the cuckoo clock has cooed and it's 4 a.m right <laughs> if anyone can count yeah <laughs> no you guys are doing great with my silly ass questions is that All an right. actual time roughly yeah it's, it's like seven yeah it's a tad fast but pretty accurate oh okay i'm yeah. just curious last time i was here it you was like someplace you gotta be no last time i was here it was like six and a half hours off really <laughs> Yeah, six and a half right. hours. Yeah, it was like six T. I, I almost it was like I, I, I want to say I count I calculate it was like six hours and forty seven <laughs> minutes off or something like that. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? What were you uh, on sitting down I, here in the basement going? Oh, yeah, that clock. It's like it can't even it, be Austrian. It had to me. Yeah. It's Austrian time. Yeah. It is a German clock, but is that Grandma Grandpa's clock? Grandma Bidlacks, yeah. yeah. Hey, so uh, what? Uh, yeah, what superpower or combination of powers would you wish you had? Oh, Christ. and what would your costume look like? Mm. A combination? How many are we allowed to choose? I mean, you can't just choose Superman because he's got like all of them. Well, I mean, when you think of yourself as a superpower, 
Okay. Doing good for the world. Oh, doing good. Assuming, oh it's got to be good. Assuming Damn. Uh, Damn. you can you can take out bad people. If one, you person, want. one person's good is another person's bad. Right. So, it's all yeah. Don't limit yourself. Yeah, okay. You yeah. can dexter this shit it. if you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. All right. I'll start off what you guys think. Okay. I don't know what Kyle or my costume would be, <laughs> but I would be a... The superpower would be to walk into a room and or... Um, group of people and be able to tell which ones are evil, which mm. ones have done bad, which ones have, have no forsaken energy or time for humanity. The evil. Just, I like that. Just horrible okay. people. And then the second power would be to ascend electrical current to them to give them a heart attack. Just drop dead right there. No nice. saving them. Dead. Okay. All right. So basically you're just walking around the planet <laughs> earth saying, Oh my God, that guy's a douche. <laughs> he did X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Just dead. Poof. Okay. But I don't think I really need a costume for that. I think I could be I a... Yeah. Your costume could be a suit or... I could know. wear what I'm wearing right now. Right. That would be my superpower. That's that's my dexterous power. It's, yeah. I can see dexter level stuff come out. You know, I feel like there's a lot of evil people out there that are just for themselves, narcissistic behavior that just do not deserve to be on this planet Earth anymore. And forget about all the attorney bullshit <laughs> about keeping them alive because they're human beings. It's like, <laughs> no, you were given the chance. You were human once. You took human life. You got bad intentions. F you, you're gone. So it would be like a spidey sense where, like, you're just walking down the street and, like... Oh, Jesus, God, that guy raped his like, cat. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you just... Dead. Like, oh. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I like that. All right. No costume required. Nope. I, I, I don't have any thoughts on the costume necessarily. Um, but I always, I always like the idea of telekinesis, moving, manipulating things with my mind, mm -hmm. being able to do that. And this, Weren't you just bitching about people being lazy earlier? Yeah, I was. Okay. Just wanted yeah. to. Bring that full, <laughs> just want to bring that full circle. Puppeteer them into right. A, I can make them do things. God damn it! No, Go to I'm Kroger. just the fat guy who's making dinner <laughs> from the couch. No, no, no. Fuck at me what? bringing my Twinkies <laughs> to my mouth. Yeah, we got to move that guy into Kroger <laughs> where he, he earns <laughs> yeah. a wage. Okay. <laughs> See, there we go. Okay. See, so it's, you're making getting people, people out. Of, yeah, get out. You're of, making people get out of my way. Their will. Yes, get out of my fucking oh way. Oh my god! All right. <laughs> Like he's screaming, I don't want to be here as he's bagging groceries. Yes. Holy shit. This is the world I want to live in. See? That's it. All right. You're welcome, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if it we're combining, then I would add like some kind of super intelligence because, I mean. More so than you have? I, I wouldn't label it super at your old age. I just threw that there in there. There we go. For you. For you. I was going there. <laughs> I had this potential for you. Damn it. Oh, Fuck thank you. you. <laughs> this is fun. Fuck you both. This is fun now. I get, I get it all day. For, uh, not all day. But I get it constantly from him and then our friends that we have together. Every time we get together, it's like, God damn it, bitch. You're ancient. Oh, you're shit. a fucking ancient. And now I'm going to get it from you, no, too. Like, so that, wasn't, that was for Austin's benefit. Now. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I. The super intelligence would be, I mean, to be able to figure stuff out. I mean, the, the way that Lex Luthor is able to challenge Superman, even though he has no superpowers or anything, but he can still challenge Superman and take him on. That. So I've I've had this thought like, so one thing that I've always considered that I would want to have as a superpower, and I've talked myself out of it. I just want to know everything. Okay. Yeah. I think it would drive me nuts. Yeah. I think I'd go too crazy. Much information. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Because nobody would believe you. Like, let's say that any of these conspiracy theories, yeah, exactly. I'm saying with a quote, you yeah. know, are correct. Nobody's going to believe you. And, and you True. would literally go insane. I can see that, too. Yeah. But super intelligence, I already have. So I should okay. probably go mm, with something else. Right. And that's it. <laughs> And we're done. <laughs> the ego has inflated past the screen that we can see, so let's move on. 
I would go with Wolverine's healing ability. Ah, uh, yeah, see, I yeah, like that that's one. That's a good one. I like that. That's too. a good one. Like that's that's cool. And also <clears throat> I think just because it'd be the power of flight. It'd be fun. That would be fun. Like that'd be fun. Or teleportation. Okay, flight through just the air or like like uh Captain Marvel that can fly through space, like with the healing ability, I feel like I could do anything. But that it, Wolverine still feels pain. So if you're flying through space and stuff, that would I have a decent pain tolerance. All right, all right. If you so say so. You're, you're roaring through space. You're going <laughs> <laughs> just screaming. I'm doing yes. it. I'm, I'm a meteor of pain just <laughs> flying at the next planet. I should turn around now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'll never find an inhabitable world. I see right. that's pretty much I've, I've established my own miserable demise. And we're back to my Catholic upbringing. I deserve this. I deserve this. I deserve this. So it must have been when I was taking a piss. That, yeah. Killed. Yeah. Must have been his, your nemesis. His nemesis was his Catholic upbringing. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's explore that. <laughs> crushing yeah, that's, guilt. Yeah, that's, that's crushing right. guilt. Crushing that's, guilt. That's, that's it. Okay. All right. Off a of basic premise. I mean, guidelines, religion is basically just guidelines to live your life. Yeah. You know, just just ideas. Hey, it should be. It should be. Yeah, don't be shitty to people. You yeah. Know, treat others as you like to be treated. You know, covet the neighbor's wife. You know, don't covet the neighbor's, covet the neighbor's wife. Yeah. We give up what we see every day, that type of thing. Don't do that. Don't kill people. Don't kill people. You know. Did did we need this to be put in tablets to un, to to get this to understand this? I mean, well, it's that it's, great George Carlin bit where he brings the Ten Commandments down to like three or something. Right? <laughs> they're all they're all kind of the same thing. Yeah. Just saying it you differently. Know, where it's yeah. like be honest. Well, right. don't covet. You yeah. know, it's it's just yeah. yeah. But it's great. But that's that is religion though. It's it's a religion is it's just control. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's that's all it is. So, but it's, 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 it's control for the weak minded, those who can't make decisions. And it goes back to accountability. It goes back to people that can't make decisions for themselves. And we, I just talked about this in my last pod or two podcasts ago about pet peeves that people that, um, go to Jesus for everything. Yeah. Or Muhammad or Buddha or. People would say, you know, the simple fact that, oh my gosh, I'm okay. I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the post office. I pray that I make it to the post office in a same or a safe way. You know, it's like Jesus take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel on everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna take a bowel movement. I hope I don't see any blood in this bowel movement. Jesus, please, please don't allow any bowel movement. And they look down. It's like yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go wash my hands. That proves that Jesus, Jesus. exists, though. It right. does. It does. Right. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with religion as far as, like, if somebody's dad dies and they were raised a certain religion and, you know, that gets them through a hard time. Yeah. Religion, it can support you. It can be a crutch through hard times, but it shouldn't be the carrier through your life. No. You know, it's it's not... Religion should be a crutch and not a rascal scooter. <laughs> it's, you know... <laughs> it's a momentary until you get... Love it. Let's and, make a t-shirt out of yeah, it. There that, we go. That, that is a t-shirt. Until you wow. get healthy enough Great. to walk on your own. Damn. We're not changing <laughs> our lifestyle. Try to get the fuck on with your life. Yes. That's, You've made it from the uh, the walker to the rascal, and now you can move. Let's go. Yeah, we're making that a Facebook meme. I'm putting it. Oh, <laughs> do it. Gosh, <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. But that's how it should be. And like, too many people get pissed about it. They do. Just love your God, man. You love your God. I'll love my beer. Yeah. <laughs> and beer is my God. Yeah, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I love Star Wars. Maybe I love the Force. Okay. Who gives a shit? Does it? Does my definition of God affect your definition right, of God, that, or does it affect your definition of God? Yeah. 
it that's doesn't matter. So stop trying thing. to tell me what yours is and what mm. we can have a conversation. No, this is what it is to me. Great. Awesome. Cool. And right. That's all it is. It's, it's a perspective. It's yeah, it's it's a belief. It's it's your mantra. I yeah. mean, when people go to church, they sit down, they do a mantra. You know, they sing their verses. They they shake hands with one another. They believe in the camaraderie. They they believe that what they're doing is is just, and they're surrounded by many people that are doing the same thing. So they feel good about themselves. Yeah, and that's no, wonderful. No problem with that. Yeah, no. that's awesome. But when you start pushing it on other people and making it the way that I live should be the way that you live. And if you don't live the way that I live, then you're damned. That's you are screwed. That's right. the coercion I was talking about. Yeah. It's the same shit. Because it's all well, and we get back to labeling. <clears throat> yeah. Is like what is the main difference between like, you know, Catholics and Methodists and Presbyterians and you know, all of that. Don't ask me. I don't know either. <laughs> but I'm pretty <laughs> no sure idea. they all pretty much say the same ten things the, of like Yeah, the basic don't premise. Kill, <laughs> don't steal. Right. Don't hurt people. It's we're squabbling over details now. Right. They it's are. who wrote it and, yeah. you know. What exactly does it yeah, so mean? Their interpretation of what was right. originally written. Yeah. But that's humanity all over the board. Sure. It is. Are yeah. there religions out there that go, fucking murder everybody? Kill everybody? No. I don't think so. But there's interpretations of Catholicism or Christianity that say yeah. eye for an eye. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not much different than some Muslim beliefs. Yeah. Buddhism is about the only one who's like, (laughs) just roll over and take it. (laughs) (laughs) So people are people. They're going to fight each other. Yeah. 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 Take it. I mean, Hindu, don't fuck a cow because you're going to come back as one. (laughs) That's right. Cows are sacred. (laughs) Yeah. Don't fuck farm animals. I feel like that should be just an across the board religious thing. Should be commandment of some kind yeah but hey that's your belief <laughs> right. i'm not judging though <laughs> i i'm sure that was a very attractive cow lady. yep if i give the five finger death punch to a cow yeah and i got off on it <laughs> i'm raising more cows that enjoy that it was mother's milk oh god <laughs> All right, now I need to use the restroom. All right. Oh, good. We finally get him out of here, Ryan. Yeah. All right. Well, we get our we have get fun. Our, we get our five minutes of. Let's let's talk bad about him while he's gone. Anything? <laughs> no, no good. Right. Thank you. No dead air. Damn it. No dead air. <laughs> no, that's the beauty of a podcast is you can have dead air. True. The funny thing is, we just talked about this a couple episodes ago about. Having dead air and allowing someone else to complete a thought. Oh, yeah. And I talked about Kanye West on a Joe Rogan podcast where he would just say, you know, how do you feel about paper? And Kanye would say, you know. (laughs) And there'd be like a 20 second freaking pause. All right. And Joe would just sit there and just wait it out. He's going to come up with something. And he did. He came up with a thought. But okay. And as I'm talking through this episode with Lainey, she's, okay, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, and you're the one that can't stand to wait for a thought to be processed. You have to chirp in there. <laughs> and she knew it. She got a hold of it. Um, she'd be a lot of fun on this podcast. This would be a fun one for her. <laughs> So give me the name of an an inanimate object <clears throat> if given a personality that hates its life of existence and one that loves its life. An inanimate object that hates its life and one that loves its life. Oh, man. First thing that comes to mind, having Austin skip out, I don't think a toilet's got to hate his life. He's got to feel like it's got to hate yeah. his life. Yeah. Uh, one that loves its life. Well, and speaking days and times, I mean, freaking cell phone. It's got to love its life. It gets attention twenty four seven from some people. It gets flicked. Yeah, 
and it's gets touched, touched, flicked. <laughs> it's all eyes on her and it at all times. The one that it truly loves and it's responsible for is gazing upon it lovingly adoringly. or adoringly at all times. You know, and and the minute it it twitches, the minute it moves, it's oh yeah, what, yeah, what can I do for you? Yeah, it's like a crying thing. baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bam, oh, come here. Attention. Yeah. So I mean, that's those are easy answers. I mean. I can give more in-depth ones, but <laughs> those are the ones that popped ahead, popped in my mind quickly. <laughs> Shit, he came back too fast. <laughs> I can leave. <laughs> so, Austin, a uh, inanimate object that loves its life and an, an inanimate object that hates its life. Toilet seat has already been taken. <laughs> That hates its life, I right, assume. Right. Yes. An animate object. That Unless it's one its weird life. fetishist. That's what I say. Toilet. <laughs> it depends on how gross you want to get. Right. <laughs> how specific can I be? Go ahead. Knock, Whatever you want to think. Knock yourself out. They're going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, I mean, that hates its life. Let's go with like, oh, we already said toilet seat. Shit. Yeah. Shit. Fuck. Literally. Shit. <laughs> yeah, shit. Literally. Um, how about a camera? I think a camera really enjoys what it takes in. Depends on what it's taken in. It depends on yeah. what it takes in. <clears throat> I don't think it could constantly hate itself. It would take beautiful pictures of beautiful things. It I know, but can't if, hate itself all the time. If you're on the uh, the receiving end of a journalist that wants to go into war and take picture of a, a grotesque things to prove that war is nasty and things like that, you're just like, oh, my camera lens, I don't want to see that. That's exactly what camera lenses sounded like, by the way. <laughs> you have first-hand knowledge? That was good, good. <laughs> I've got one. Something that hates its life. Okay. A urine test kit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you get pissed on. So just, what? Just, yeah. It's constantly. sterile. Every day. It's sterile. It's, it's sterile. warm. It's, it like it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's your problem? Urination test <laughs> kit. Get what? over it. Lane. Yep. It's warm. Lane. I, I'm not judging fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Predominantly, I would say that most people, most things, don't want to be peed on. Okay. Okay, that's fair. I'm fair. I enjoy a Tennessee <laughs> waterfall or whatever the hell that's called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Golden shower. Golden shower. Yes. Golden shower. That's. What am I thinking? Wisconsin waterfall. That's what I'm thinking. That's a, that's what a the hell is a Wisconsin that's waterfall. Oh, okay. that's, oh, that's a mole. That's a mole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Golden shower. Wisconsin waterfall. <laughs> Not the same thing. We don't have no, an urban not, dictionary pulled up on our phones right now. Same. <laughs> Far from it. Um, something that loves its day. Loves its life. A balloon. Circus balloon. <laughs> short, <laughs> short lived. Makes kids happy. Okay. And then gets to go up in the air like we were talking about, and then it just pops and dies. Just make it, clown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not one of the tie balloons. Oh, I was going to say, I'm thinking balloon animals. Oh, yeah. No, I'm oh. just talking like a, here's a balloon, kid. And then the balloon flies away and just goes up in the heavens and pops. Okay. But what about the the child on the end of that string that's crying because his balloon left him? Yeah, but like a parent. Who gives a we, shit? We, we, give, we, we give our children <laughs> happiness, and then we just fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> and we welcome death because it's the only thing it's that we look forward the to. the only salvation after point. that. The some, only salvation. Some sooner than others, Biz, but you <laughs> hang on. You Jesus. hang on. Yeah. Oldie but a goodie. You've got a lot to offer. <laughs> Oldie but a goodie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Lane has more gray hair than I do. That's not fair. That's I not like fair. six. No, he cuts it correctly, so he doesn't. Do you see any gray hair on me? Not one. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's all right here. 
I got those. It's where the predominance of mine is. It's starting. That is wisdom. Wisdom on That's the chin. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taking a lot of knowledge on your chin. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Have you ever got have you guys ever uh whispered your name in the dark? What? Um, I'm single, so I do it daily just to, <laughs> just to complete the role play. Like, I, I, I have to play both parts, so uh, that makes sense. yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. Go, yes. Steven. <laughs> okay, Austin. Yes, Austin. <laughs> Lexi, you're doing wonderful. So are you, Austin? See? Yeah. Tell me, it doesn't sound weird to whisper your own name in the dark. Quietly. Well, it does sound weird, but well, sometimes it, it's a means to an end. <laughs> <laughs> to anybody listening, I dare you <laughs> to sit quietly in the dark and whisper oh, your own name. I, I guarantee 90% of the people who are listening to this podcast are going to do it <laughs> just oh, to find out. Just to find out. Just it's, to find it's out. It's a freaking will, weird experience. Yeah. I will honestly say I've never done this. I, have no, this I haven't is, either, but oh, God goody. damn it, I'm going yeah, to do Yeah, this it. is going to happen. <laughs> goody, we will call it homework. Follow up. Follow up. <laughs> Follow up. In, in 30 episodes, I will call you guys right. and we'll get back on saying, so... <laughs> Beginning so, the episode. How was it? How was it? <laughs> yeah, you guys be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You'll have to call into the sanitarium because I'll be the straight jacket because I <laughs> yeah. lost my mind. <gasps> I thought you were going to say the Austin hotline because they're going to be so popular by then. <laughs> hmm. I, I, There's a video. <laughs> <laughs> I Reels. know what I look like. I've, I've seen me. I, I own a mirror. I make that much money. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you ever think about, dream, or hope to do anything, something different than you're doing right now? What was the original dream? What was the original hope? Or do you ever sit at your current position and think, God, it'd be so cool to be X, Y, and Z? Do you know what I always want? I always wanted to be... A musician. Hmm. Yeah, what capacity? Guitarist, pianist, singer. singer, singer, singer. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, you can't tell from my smoke-addled voice at this point, but, um, back in the day, I was, I was a pretty good singer. I was in a band. We were, we were terrible, but I am not a bad singer. But I always enjoyed performing in front of people and just yeah. like love. I love the concept of that. It just seems cool. And then who? People our age, come on! I mean, Ron's age, our age. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I mean, Frank Sinatra wasn't quite a rock star, <laughs> but you know, people crooner. get people getting that on. You the, are the my video. sunshine, my only sunshine. <laughs> that was shit. that was your top forties, right? That was your top forties. I'm just trying to bring you back. So. Crooners. Yeah. You're, you're starting to piss off my parents at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but no, rock I mean, but like how cool would it have been like when we were growing up to have been a rock star? You know, like who didn't want to be on, stage, on MTV like getting that attention. Just just nail it. And and that's that that's my perspective. You guys may not have wanted that, but I was just like, man, that'd be cool. Yeah. So yeah, that that yeah, that's it. Anything? See, and that's it, it goes back to my nemesis, to your, my nemesis talking shit. yourself yep. into a circle. Nemesis shit. Yeah. Too logical. Too much too much shit. Too logical and not a dreamer. That that was been a, that would've been an awesome dream, but this one could have been cool too. Shit, damn it. Oh too much. But you know what? Too much. Had I done this, right. I'd have, I'd have fallen on my face right here. Too much. So what would it have been? What would it have been? I, if? I, my original dream back in high school was to be the commander of a nuclear submarine. That's why I started out in the Navy. Yeah. Went to Purdue on the Navy ROTC scholarship. Almost got in the Naval Academy, all that good stuff. And it only took me a year to figure out, God damn it, I don't like being told what to do. Right. And so. Unless it's by yourself. Even then, I don't listen to myself either. Obviously. Exactly. Ever. Right. So I have a problem with authority on every level, including myself. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I thought I was, I was, 
you know, the logical thinking, the the slow pace of the tactics involved with nuclear submarines, that was my thing. But to get to that point, people telling me what to do 24-7, <laughs> fuck off. You would have been an admiral. Right. Yeah. But, damn it, to get to that point, fuck off. Seriously. You would have been, you would have been president by this point. Right. Exactly. Where the Maybe hell? too old, but I don't know. I mean... I'm waiting on the retort. Why are you, why are you giving I'm me waiting the, the retort. Finger? Why are you giving me the finger? He started yeah. Yeah. It's going to come. Yeah. God damn asshat. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm so not. where the hell did that come from? What? The the defiance of authority. Oh, man. I mean, I, talking to yourself into a circle saying, no, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna do it my way. That, uh, it's not honestly, like we had stern parents right, that said, no. No, it smack wasn't you over that. the head with a ruler. And no, not at all. Do it this way. It's no. not like we had that. No, not at all. I I don't know where it came from. I think it was just a, it just a rational thought that, you know, I spent my high school career, you know, I did a lot of things that I wanted to do, but it was also to to please everyone. As far as grades. Grades, yeah. but I mean, grades. I hate to say it, but it came easy for me. That that wasn't that big of a challenge don't hate to say that you should be proud of that i i am you but it, you should be proud of that but at the same token <clears throat> you were all about those fucking grades i was because i came at you the one day that i remember that fight yeah you remember that <laughs> and you the, pinned in the backyard <laughs> the day i said you know you might get a b yep and yep. you freaking flipped uh, your yep. shit never on me. never had a b in my life never had a b in my fucking <laughs> life it just started going ape shit on how me. old were you guys well, he's oh. three and a half years older than me, so yeah. you were what? I was in high school at some point. He still was probably in junior high, something like that. Couldn't say. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe 16 and 13, 16 and 12, something like that. No, it, it, why I ask is it's funny because I got my first B when I was like in eighth grade, and my brother, okay. my younger brother ridiculed me on the way home as my mom is a loving person, but she did turn around and go, it's a fucking B and like was beating <laughs> me from the driving before. seat. Yeah. <laughs> so not at our house. No, that, that was all on me. That, that was, was all on Ryan's head. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, to get most of those A's was not a huge effort for me. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. And, but when you about got a B, yeah, you about lost your shit. Yeah. And I just asked you, why is that? Why is that such a big deal? And you just flipped on me. Yeah, it was it was the only thing that I felt uh, at that time. It was the only thing that I really I it, it identified me as okay. I was smart a class kid. I was a class nerd. I mean, I got ridiculed for being the smartest sort of. I put up with a lot of shit for being that way. You're but it was get a hug after this. That's all right. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I've come to terms with it. <laughs> but it was that was mine that was something i can hold on to like i got shit for playing golf when everyone else played football in a football school basically i played basketball but i wasn't big enough to be really that good at it and you know just there was nothing i could really cling to except that i was smart and i was the only one in our grade that had a's all the way through and that was mine and to possibly lose that was potentially devastating to me and for you to make fun of me for it oh yeah i took that out on you <laughs> it's, it's like a, i wasn't even making fun of you for it right you weren't no cuckoo drink yep. cuckoo cuckoo <laughs> i wasn't even making fun of you for it no was, you weren't i was just bringing it to your attention saying yeah why the fuck does that matter <laughs> not in my exact words at whatever right. age i was yeah and I, I went nuts over you, yeah, and I remember, you know, chasing you down, pinning you in the backyard, yeah, and just, I went crazy about it, and I didn't get the B, I got the A, so mm-hmm. it wasn't that big of a deal, but, yeah, it was, <laughs> it's funny that you remember that fight, and I do too. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I but, thought I remember every single fight we had, but it no. was always a, <laughs> it was always a punch in the arm. That's, yep. what I, that's all I remember. I always tell Julie that too. She said, "What's it like growing up with a, a brother?" When I was like, "Well, we always had this unwritten rule: you don't you don't punch for the face, just punch right in the arm, right in the arm. Whoever loses, yep. they cry first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in the arm. You hit me yep. harder. Yep. I'm gonna. Oh, that hurts. Okay, quit. 
Unwritten rule. Yep. <laughs> My brother and I have hit each other in the face. I can imagine that. <laughs> you and Heath. You know, judging by your face right now, I'd say <laughs> you got the worst of it. <laughs> That's fair. I'm just I'm just recalibrating for all the. No, I think yes. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. One hundred percent. Everything's gonna 100%. even. We're getting a little back this way. All right. No, but I will say so. I've I've only punched my brother in the face once because I was the older brother. Okay. And I think we were in our upper twenties. Oh, all right. When that happened, really? and we were both hammered and actually. <laughs> so for. When you're younger, my brother, I've always been heavier. My brother's tiny and small and could run faster, so I could never catch him. But if oh. I did, I'd just roll him up in a bowl. <laughs> yeah. And that was the thing. His friends a couple times held me down, and he would punch me. <laughs> and one time he got me in the eye. <laughs> oh. But and then whatever. he got mad and threw all his friends off of me. Went after <laughs> and then, yeah, I lost my... But the, the one time that I punched my brother in the face, and I, I think it was... The only time that he purposefully punched me in the face was a drunken New Year's Eve. He was going to a bar to get in a fight. We're in our late twenties. Yeah. Let me under. I'm. I'm just gonna have a job this with, growing. We this. are. We are. My brother and I are <laughs> incredibly immature okay. in so many ways. You are okay. into adulthood. <laughs> okay. by now. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and. We were both so drunk that he was going to get into a fight, and rather than I couldn't get after him, so I called my dad and was like, I'm too drunk to do anything about this. <laughs> Heath's going to get in a fight. Come get me. Let's go get him. Because I couldn't drive. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So my dad shows up. A weird we dynamic. Go, we <laughs> go to the bar. My brother... I thought my brother told my dad to go fuck himself and that pissed me off. So I leaned out the window and punch him in the face and then fell out of the car door. <laughs> At which point I stood up. My brother punched me in the face. I slid on the ice. My dad, who is larger than both of us yeah. put together, yeah. goes, get in the fucking truck. <laughs> We get in the truck. He drives us back to his house. We wake up at my parents' house the next morning, and my brother comes in. He goes, dude, you hit pretty hard. <laughs> and I was like, you knocked me down. He goes, you were on ice. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and that was the last. That was it. Like, that's that's well, the extent of me and my okay. brother throwing That symbolizes dudes. every man's quarrel with another guy. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Guys get pissed. We scuffle, whether there's punches thrown or there, it's a physical altercation, and then that's it. This is what it is. Instead of the woman biology, <laughs> that <sighs> we don't get into an altercation. We just start chirping, pecking. I won't spread, rest. Spread rumors about each until other. Until you lose 50 pounds with an eating <laughs> disorder. <laughs> Because I will hate you until the end of my days. And I'm going to tell all my friends about it. <laughs> right. And you've only lost weight because you're a slut. <laughs> oh, slut is the key word. She, I heard, she blew six guys on the bus. <laughs> Do you know why she lost weight? Because she keeps fucking the football team. <laughs> and then she throws up afterwards. Because <laughs> there's so much jism in her mouth. Oh she God. can't help it. That's her only source of protein. But they own. They pay her in Clark bars, <laughs> and then she pukes. It's terrible. <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but <laughs> God damn it, that is the dialect that women share. It is. That, no. is, that is how they quote unquote fight. That is my understanding of it. Uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, understanding but of it. Yeah. Yes, but yes, that's it. <laughs> my our, god as every man's experienced that is the way that women fight <laughs> and whereas guys were just like fuck you no oh, fuck you yeah fuck and uh, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. you know Couple. physical altercation yep. punches thrown or wrestling has taken place some some sort of physical test 
and then you get up and you're just like, I'm done. Well, I'm done too. Well, we've measured each other. Yeah, we've measured pet- potentially. But that's the other thing, though. Have you you've been in a fight? Yeah, not very many, but yeah, I've been. Okay, I mean, I've gotten my ass kicked, but I've also I have also won fights, surprisingly. <laughs> but at the end of it, like Ryan and I are shocked. You should be. You should all be shocked. I'm containing mine better, but <laughs> go but on. at the end of it, there's also that like we're done, we're done, and yeah. also like good for you for trying. Like yeah, we've there's our respect, yeah, you know. Like even if you win, if you lose, it's like all right. At least I threw my best at you. You know, whatever. There's a you know, don't come at me again. Yeah, if you come at me again, I'm, this is what you're going to. This get. is what's happening, yeah. right? But it's also like I appreciate the fact that you fucking threw your hat in the ring. You yeah. know, there, yeah. there's there's a there's a respect issue to somebody that's coming at you and is going to give you their all, and that's cool. Yeah, and that should be expected. Anytime you challenge somebody, that like you know, you might get their best, and their best might be better than yours at the time or whatever. Yeah. And you have to respect that. That's the whole thing is respect. That's it, but. When you win, you should respect that they gave you their yeah. all, and that they at least challenged. You know, yeah, that's and there's a humility that goes along with that too. It's like I got you this time, but you've seen what they can dish out potentially, and you know there could be like this one little moment where you got the best of them, but they could get the best of you, and yeah. you might not need to do this again. No, oh, there's a kid that lived down the street from me when I was growing up, and he, we we ragged on him. I I I feel bad. Honestly, I feel bad about this. Like we ragged on this kid and one day we were playing basketball and he literally looked at me and just threw me an elbow and it knocked me to my knees and i was like fucking justin you got me today man (laughs) and he goes don't pick on me anymore and i was like i'm not gonna pick on you anymore i'm not gonna pick on you less but i won't pick on you anymore (laughs) yeah you know but I didn't know that was he. He earned my respect, like standing up for himself, and like yeah, that's that's all it is. Standing yeah. up for yourself, and yeah. I was like, "All right, man. Like I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuck with Justin anymore. You know mm-hmm. he's 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 got his shit, and you know we my brother and I were still the dominant kids on the block, <laughs> but we didn't fuck with Justin, and that's that's the male, like you were saying, that's the male." Yeah way of doing things you know you hold your own for a moment you gain a little respect get some respect yep let's say it usually only takes probably one stance maybe two in your life as a guy yeah and then everything is kosher everything's good yeah i mean you get you get a bully that's coming around you about sixth seventh eighth grade and you stand up to him yep that covers you for another at least three or four years. And we're just talking like ages, age yeah. range of, you know, when that that teenage male is most aggressive, most right. yeah. trying to establish himself amongst the group or whatever. And that covers you three or four years. You might, ex- you might uh, experience another bully in high school. And if you just roll the dice and throw a punch at him, even in high school, and yeah. you don't win, but... He knows that you're not going to back down from him. Yeah. That's, that's, it's just weird because it sets the tone for the rest of your life. You get two chances, basically. <laughs> so that's... I guarantee you guys remember the first time you were punched in the face. Like, where you were into it and you just got rocked in the face. I've only been rocked in the face once. Yeah, I can only remember one time I got rocked. Oh, in the really? Face. Yeah. yeah. And I was not expecting it. It was, um, it was kind of like a sucker punch kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I should probably put my brain in for CTE because I've been knocked <laughs> out like four times. But, <laughs> you just um, got a mouth on you, then. I do. <laughs> he, he I does. do. He does. <laughs> but, no, but no, like on. that. But go that on. that first time you're punched, though. Yeah. Like it's it it takes away that glass jaw syndrome, because that's that's the other thing that I found out is. So I I managed restaurants for a lot of years, 
and there was always like the young kid who'd come in and he would just be like super jacked, you know, and he was 21 years old and, you know, he's server, busser, whatever, whatever he is. And he'd be that guy who's, you know, oh, I'm just, I'm just awesome. And nice kid. Like I'm not, I'm not diminish, diminishing like his personality. But as an older person, like you go out and you see this kid walking around and you see him getting that first fight because you're taking him to local bars that maybe are not, <laughs> not, I wasn't taking him, but we would just go to the local bars of, you know, the older crowd. Right. The people that wouldn't put up with any shit. People that wouldn't put up with his 21 year old <laughs> ass, you know, arrogant ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you see him and you see that first time and it happened multiple times. We're like, you see this kid get punched. And it was like, it just lights him up and he's done. Like there, there was no fight after that because yeah. it was the Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, <laughs> until until the face. The face. Yeah. you know? And, but once you get punched in the face, you understand how that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a different feeling. I it is the first time I got hit in the face. I jumped I chased this kid down. He drove by in a car. I was at my cousin's place out in his Tate's. Okay. Sitting at the end of Tate's uh, driveway, country road. Kid flies by, nemesis. He was oh. he was the ex-boyfriend of the girl I was dating. Oh. And he Murder was going time. Out, he was going out to her house. <laughs> Murderville. He was going out to her house after he stopped out the party that I was at and then left abruptly before I get a chance to talk to him. And I was sitting at the end of the driveway. They drove by. He drove by. He was hanging his head out the window. Fuck you! Just at us. He didn't know. Whatever. <laughs> drove by us, and I'm like, let's get that fucker! And we drove not even a quarter of a mile to this girl's house that I was dating, where his ex-girlfriend was. I hopped out of the car. He was already standing out of the car. He took off his shirt. Just ghetto shit. <laughs> country yeah. country ghetto shit. Whatever you want to call it. He took off his shirt. I'm like, okay. I took my shirt off. Got over. He got within like three inches of my face. And I just went to swing as hard as I could. Uppercut him. Missed. Yeah. Spun myself all the way around just so he could punch me right across the side of the cheek. And the left cheek. Bam. Yep. And it left me a little dizzy and unconscious for a second and when i turned back his friends had already grabbed him like dude the, the guy you just punched he didn't fall down after that punch so he's gonna kill you <laughs> so we better take you and they ran off into the woods but, and then the sheriff's department showed up sorry really? mom this is one of those stories <laughs> but i want to I know the people who are involved because i probably know them <laughs> I was, after the show <laughs> yeah but it's just funny that you remember that because you get clocked in the face and it's like all reality sets in because you're a little wonky. And had he been like an MMA fighter or somebody that had been oh, trained, yeah. he would have jumped all over me. He would have right. beat the shit out of me. Right. But he punched me and just thought, well, wow, I connected. Let's see how that works out. And I shook it off and I was ready to fight him some more. But then his friends grabbed him and off they went. But had he jumped in by the time I was trying to shake that all off, he'd have beat the hell out of me. Yeah. And it's just a it's just a funny little story that you remember in your mind that the first time you got jacked right in the face. And I never got hit after that, but that was the only fight I ever got punched right in the face. There's been other times where I punched people in the face, and I'm sure they probably felt the same thing. <laughs> yep. But at that time, it was just like, you know, you shake it <laughs> off, and you're just like, I hope this ends well, because I can see straight now. I will speak on behalf of all the people you punched in the face for the first time. Yes, they had no idea what was coming next. <laughs> yeah, because it's just a, just like a, oh. Well, that, that I've heard that's a first rule of fighting someone who's drunk. Do not punch them in the face. That will sober them up. Like the adrenaline will automatically bring them into a new state of mind to where, okay, they're ready to fight now. Really? Depends yeah. on how drunk. <clears throat> True. So I mean, if you drunk someone who, yeah, there's a certain level. But, I mean, uh, if you're just fighting someone or you're ready to fight someone who is been drinking for a while don't 
throw that first punch. You will sober them up. Let them make the first mistake, take advantage of it, and then end the fight. I will tell you the best move that I know is to be so drunk that you aim for the guy's face and hit him in the throat. (laughs) (laughs) You just... Um, for the middle. I can see that. Like, yeah. I, I literally was going. <laughs> I was going for a jaw, hit him in the throat. That dude didn't get up for a while. <laughs> I was concerned for his behalf. Yeah. <laughs> your turn to talk about me. I'm going to Okay. Oh, that bid's gay. So what? You hit him in the throat? Oh, I felt terrible. I, so I, no, I, I did. I, I was hammered. I was going for the jaw. I don't know if he moved or if I was just that drunk. Hit him in the throat. He drops to the ground, grabbing his throat. And I started saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, because I... Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It don't was die. just like, don't die. <laughs> and so that that was an issue. We were at Harry's. Yeah. And yeah, it was just one of those. He smacked his girlfriend twice. I have no tolerance for that. Yep. He did it the first time. I went over. I said, you touch her again. I will clean the floor. Yeah. Like I will fuck you up. And he laughed me off because he was much bigger than me. Yeah. And then he did it again. And I was sitting 20 feet away and I went over and slammed his head on the table. And I, I, I blindsided him. I don't even care. Like it was a sucker punch. So he literally was smacking his girlfriend in the face. Yeah. And so as we got kicked out, the bouncer looked at me and said, we know he does this. The cops will be here in a couple minutes. Do what you can. Because he was like already out of it. Who was? The the guy that I hit. Oh. Because I hit his head on the table and we both got kicked out. Yeah. And then he took a punch. He, he swung at me and that's when I missed his face and hit his throat. So when you smacked his head on the, the table, I mean, were you guys both in, totally inebriated? Oh, I was hammered. Yeah. Yeah. So was he? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm guessing. I don't know. But don't hit your girlfriend. Yeah, I was going to say, you just don't fucking do that shit. I've never hit a girl in my life. I will never hit a girl in my life on purpose. Yeah. Like, I may be reaching back to punch a dude that hit his girlfriend and smack, <laughs> smack a girl, the girl in the face. on accident. And then oh, all of a shit, sudden, I'm sorry. Ah. and then I'm canceled, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, I was going to say the other time that I'd gotten into a fight was I was a bouncer at a bar and I feel like you'd be a good bouncer. I'd be a fair, I'm a fair bouncer. No, I feel, but you have a reasonable persona, but also there's a level there is there's a like there's a limit you, there is a limit yeah there's a limit with me yeah. and that's you you carry that wherever you go right and i think that's that's true with everybody um but yeah i was, I was a bouncer at a bar and this guy he was a fraternity guy which is you know something i can't can't say i stand but you know i'm not putting everybody on that you know oh, you're a fraternity no, no, no. guy right. you're a dick yeah. you know right but this guy was part of a specific fraternity and I can't remember what the hell he did, but I was like, all right, you're done. Get the hell out of here. And I started shoving him and like three other guys in his fraternity down the back hallway, which was like a nice corridor about four, inch, four feet wide and just started shoving four, four guys at a time, just start shoving them. And I had one other bouncer behind me. And there were two other bouncers that were standing at the door checking IDs. And they got these guys to the door, shoved them out the door. They didn't know what the fuck was going on because they were drunk. They were just being belligerent douchebags. And <clears throat> got them out the door. This guy took like two stumbling steps back, pivoted himself, posted himself, and then took a swing at me. And I ducked it and went over my head. And that was the first time I've ever been swung on outside of the guy that punched me really? in the face. Really? Yeah. And when he took a swing at me, I took a step back and he went, Ooh, like, like, yeah, it's fucking on. Let's go. And another bouncer that was not working that, that night, who was a hockey player came charging out of the darkness. He was there with some other, with his date. 
come charging out of the darkness, tackled this guy, and all of a sudden there was like a group of five dudes on top of him. <laughs> and another guy, the bouncer that was behind me, came behind me. Hey, that's that's Karcher. His name is Karcher. That's Karcher. And we just started chucking guys, just grabbing them, just throwing them <laughs> off, just one right after the other. I mean, it was just so funny how it all transpired. But I just remember taking that, that guy out the back door. He took a step, took a swing at me, missed, and he just like stood there like, we're going to brawl. All of a sudden, bap. Hockey yep. guy took him out, and then a dog pile. And then we just started grabbing guys, just started throwing them right and left. It's just funny. The, the only times you fight in your life, you, you really remember them. And like my neighbor says, nobody ever wins in a fight. Nope. No. So for us older guys, the older you get, there's really no reason to fight. You're going to wake up in the morning and just feel like you're dead. You're going <laughs> to miss teeth. You're going to hurt. All that shit. I'm going to leave you guys with that. I got to pee. <laughs> so that's my... Your... You weren't... No, you weren't there. For what? Uh, when I got into my strip club fight. Because you were throwing up in my <laughs> apartment. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was after the wedding. Yeah, yeah. that was an awesome fight. You told me about it, but yeah, I was... It was not an awesome fight. I got my ass kicked. Yes, I remember that part, but... You know. But it was cool. Like, yeah. I did my thing. <laughs> Yeah, you acted honorably. I and I acted honorably. Yes, that that holds up well. If you'd have been there, we'd have won. We would not have. We would have gone to jail. That's probably the more likely turn. Yeah. Out. So <laughs> it's better. It's better than I wasn't there. It's better that we drank too much at my yes lesbian cousin's <laughs> wedding during ninety degree weather and my cousin's lesbian wedding. How do you lesbian weddings? Is that what they're called now? I just call it Lesbian. wedding. Wedding? Oh, well, yes, obviously. I don't care, but <clears throat> I thought there was. Is there not a phrase? I thought I read something. I don't know. I can't keep up anymore. It's, I'm not. I'm not part of the PC culture. I'll call it a wedding and leave it at that. You know, let I thought it was a wedding too, but maybe it's not. Is it not? Oh, they are they? Do they have a term for it? Is that what you're talking about? I thought there was a term. There may not oh. be a term. All right. I just call it a wedding, whether it's between it's between two people and they pledge devotion to each other. That's that's all I care about. That's good enough for me. Whether it's two lesbians, two men, two two horses, I, whatever you want to call it, I, good enough. Oh, I don't care who they are. Hmm. Yeah, is that labeling? Didn't know if there was a term, I, I didn't know either, but. You guys have enough to talk about while I was gone? We were talking about the time Ryan left me hanging in a fight. Oh, whatever. <laughs> God. <laughs> then there's that guy. You have all... This is all recorded. I know. He knows it's bullshit. He knows it's bullshit. <laughs> He's got the evidence. I just like to give you shit because it's fun. I know, I know and I like to react appropriately because yeah. it's funnier. Yeah. Dare I delve into it or... No, it was... Okay. No, it was when he left me hanging in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I was because I was, because I was busy was, throwing up because I drank he'd been busy to, throwing up in my right. apartment yes. for hours before hours. the fight happened. Oh, and then but he got in a fight. In reference to our fight story, yes, there was a girl, a friend, a female friend that I was with. Guy slaps her. This is controversial. She was running her mouth. I'm not saying she deserved it. Right. But by God, she was pushing for it. <laughs> pushing for deserving it. Yeah. But anyway, you don't hit a girl. So he slaps her. I decide now I have to do something, <laughs> even though I'm old. And I punch him, knowing that his friend is going to punch me. The coolest part of it, though, is that... And I rem this is the only I was I was very drunk and getting the shit kicked out of me. The the coolest part, and I remember thinking this at the time, was we threw ourselves over the hood of a car, like in a movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and at that time, there's two guys hitting me, and I was like, 
that was pretty cool. I that was that was like the last thing until all these police show up and then these right. two guys hit police officers and I'm like <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm good now. Yeah, I was going to say, now. I'm good now. <laughs> yeah. I can walk away from this. And I did. But that was cool. I was like, I've never been in a fight where, like, I got, was tussling <laughs> with a dude and just over the hood of a car, yeah. right out of a movie. Just, just like in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. And the bouncer at the strip club was like, it looked like something out of a movie. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so he said to you. <laughs> yeah. The funny so. thing is, you don't know really what you're made of until you get physically tested. And oh, that, sure. goes, that goes back to what we were yes. talking about as far as guys having issues and girls having issues. It's like, us guys are just like, you know what, you're full of shit. No, you're full <laughs> of shit. All yeah. right, well, let's see who's full of shit. And yeah. we'll physically test each other. Whereas women will just physically head game each other. Which will yeah. get them nowhere until they get to a point where they've broken each other and cry. Yeah. And then it's, they're just like, oh, come here. I need to talk to you. And then they hug. And then it's like, we're best friends forever. It's, it's that, that same bond is the same way that guys get from physical altercation. Right. But until you've been, your metal has been tested, until some guy calls you out and says, you know what, douche? You're <laughs> full of shit. All that stuff you've been talking on social media, it's time to man up because you've been talking so much shit about me <laughs> and call me whatever. I'm going to punch you in the face. Are you ready for it? And yeah, go ahead. Like, I'm going to call your bluff. Well, I just punched you in the face and now we're going to fight. And after that, you're just like, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> want to be friends? Okay. All right. Why is that? Why is that guys can get away with that and that women are just like, I'm going to be caddy and your nemesis testosterone it's, it's, it's the way we're made man i mean you can't you can't ignore the biological markers you can't ignore the biological <laughs> factors of men and women it, you just can't as much as the media as much as you know the culture tries to say that you know gender is fluid I, I i agree there are, it's a spectrum everyone's on a fucking spectrum i get it but at the same time, biologically speaking, as far as the species procreates itself, there is a male and there's a female. And they are built biologically different. Yeah. And the fact is, males produce more testosterone and that messes with our brains. And the women produce more estrogen and it messes with their brains. And it just, you can't escape it. It's just, there's, we are functionally animals. We're all animals animals i think it's it. different what's different? i think it's hunter and gatherer i it, there's some there is some like uh women can gather they 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 a warm there's like a socialization socialization that happens men went out and hunted the women stayed together right, gathered. but also yeah, i get that men can prove dominance and still understand that they need the less dominant man to hunt sure the thing it's a yeah. survival of species um sorry. Uh gathering can take place with less women. Drink. Time. Time. Oh. And also, like the strongest male, women compete with women. Men compete with men for a woman, whereas women compete with women for a male. Okay. I said that wrong. I say that it doesn't seem to. Work. There was a <clears throat> men compete with men for women in general. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking like wolf society. Let's talk about wolves. There's an alpha wolf. It's probably impregnating all of the viable female wolves. They move on. That's how naturalization works. Okay. Whereas the female wolves are like, we're competing to procreate, get that procreation that dick. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
But I feel like you kind of know where I'm going. <laughs> women hate women more than men hate men. <laughs> that's that's your message. <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. They're getting that wolf day. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord that's funny okay it's funny you didn't say anything Where, where's, the cam- where's the camera it's, i hope it's on you don't have to move <laughs> imperial ideas is is this this is what's happening imperial ideas truth. <laughs> impregnate your mind with these <laughs> such strange thoughts i am drinking the truth <laughs> yeah that's the motto yeah you drink the truth <laughs> oh man <laughs> <laughs> oh shit I might need to step outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're close to wrapping this up. Probably, right? I would think so. Um, so, I want to ask one more question. All right. Do you think the orgasm ratio between men and women has anything to do with the crime rate in America? Men, especially as we age, can go one to two times at night, whereas women can go two or more. You know, heaven forbid you're a fast shooter for whatever reason. But do you think that has anything to do with the crime rate? Hmm. These are all just silly questions that pop <laughs> right. in my head, by the way. I get that, but I'm trying to find a rational answer to the question. No. And here's why. Okay. Considering your last statement, I'd love to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk. Now, here's my answer to this question. Yeah. I'm going to keep drinking just because this is funny as shit. I swear I'm not raping a duck. That's me opening a bottle in the background. Oh, okay. Well, if that's not him raping a duck, then I have to step back from my question. Oh. Your thought, because I posed the question. Yeah. It's his question. Your thought. No, I know. Does it have anything to do with the crime rate? The crime rate. Because you consider... A guy that's <clears throat> we talking violent crime or yeah, violent, violent all right. crime? All right, all right. I, I want to um, know this though. Pissed. What? Sure. What has the study done that women women have more orgasms per? I understand experience, experience, yeah. but. Only that's the study of orgasmic experiences. What now? Okay. So are you saying that every time you've had sex with a woman, she's had an orgasm? Well, that's under the assumption and under the experience that a woman you have, you've had sex with experiences at least one orgasm to your one orgasm. Okay. So if we're talking crime rates, do you think the... Oh, this is going to sound bad. <laughs> do it. It's going to sound bad. <laughs> UFOs do you are think, real and your next explanation is awesome. Do you think the guys <laughs> that are doing the crime... I'm trying to be nice about this. Just throw it out there. Do you think the gangbangers really give a shit whether their girls are getting (laughs) off? Well, no. No. No, not at all. So Uh, then how does that affect crime rate? uh, That's a good point. If, we're to, if, yeah, the people, if, if, if you if, were to stereotype, like, the milk toast, you know, Yeah, if the people that are committing the crimes are frustrated male. yeah frustrated frustrated males right. you can't imagine that they're going to be giving their gals the time that right. they're getting multiple orgasms so it cannot be yeah correlated i, I, that's I a, get that's it. a valid point i get it but i'm talking about would you think that the guys that are feeling as, as though they've uh appeased the woman's sexual needs they feel as though they've they're the master you know they they did it they, okay if that's the case then i wouldn't equate it to orgasm necessarily i would equate it to you know how many women they've gotten or how many they think they deserve kind of thing if we're talking you know stereotypical gangbangers you know how many hoes have they attracted or how many have they you know 
corralled in the last day or two or whatever. But even then, you're if you're you're talking like Al Capone. Let's go back to then. Like who died of syphilis? Right, he did. How many of those girls were having orgasms? I don't. Yeah, you're right. I don't think he cared. Didn't care. Right. Yeah. I think the probably it's more of a predilection of crime rate would be guys who don't give a shit. That's more of a sociopathic mindset is I don't care about this person. This is a means to an end. So I'm yeah. going to commit crimes and orgasm rate. Like I'm getting what I need and right. it doesn't matter as far as what the female needs. And that, that goes that goes to CEOs. I mean, well, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. Where well, it, it CEOs, CEOs are also you know the current crime people. Well, it, that the too. But I mean, the, the not all, s- not not across the board. Right, psychopathic traits are yeah, identified. Jeff, Jeff were cool. 95 percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, psychopathic traits identify or identified in CEOs and, and people in those positions of power. It's you know, right. It's a but, fine line. But we yeah. do live in a society where that is predominantly male. So Sure. Yeah. The f- female orgasm probably doesn't dictate a whole lot. To those people? Yeah. To those people? They sure. don't care. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think they give a yeah. crap at all. No. All There's right. probably some sick ones that would be better served if they didn't have... I don't know. What? <laughs> finish it. What yeah, the hell are you talking about? No, I want to like, see where that goes. Just, no, what? I'm just saying. I, I bet there's a lot of guys out there like in that realm who were like, I'm not going to finish if you finish. Oh, wow. That's wow. That's, that's a power thing. Wow. Really? Jeez. I feel like that's a thing. I, I can't imagine that, but okay. I mean, there's I, there are different fetishes out there for sure, and sure. I'm sure there's some fucking uh, douchebag out there. Yeah. Men and women, it's just like, I control the power. Wow. I can hold this. But that is, here's the thing, though. That is a huge thing in the male porn industry. Yeah. There's a... I'm a single guy, just so you know. I've, I've been on websites. <laughs> I've, I've seen something. Which? But no, that's there's a uh, there's a there's a whole video. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like women denying men. Oh, the, the uh, damn it! What's then it you've called? seen it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, edging. Yes, edging. edging. There you go. There you go. Edging. Mm. But that's that's a that's a huge thing. So yeah. it's got to be reciprocal on the other side. Makes sense. Yeah. So. All right, I needed some explanation. What the hell is edging? It's like basically orgasm denial yeah. type mindset. Bring you to the edge and then yep. stop you. Yep. Yeah. For what men or women? The, the women are controlling the power. Women, women have control, the power. Yeah. Whether you reach climax or not. And then, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. not into that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get there. <laughs> I will also, as as a caveat, I'm just saying I'm the only one in control of myself. So I've I, never had the opportunity to not to be edged. I right. mean, I've had the opportunity, I guess. Sure. I've had right. sex so, sure. like twice. So what about the uh, what about the guys that like getting kicked in nuts? Oh, I, I, I'm sure you guys have seen and and perused the internet and seen. I know of this, and yes, that's not my thing. No. I, I don't understand. If you if you've seen the show, uh, the Go Big show or whatever on TBS, Go Big, no, yeah, it's it, reality TV show contest like America's Got Talent. Only like they encourage the contestants to go big, go just do freaky stunts and balls shit. out, all kinds of crazy stuff. And some of it's really cool stuff. But there was a guy on the other night. And I called Jeremy down here to check this out because I had it on TV. It was, I was watching a show. It went to the next show. I was playing a game. Didn't really pay attention, but they had a guy on here and I'd seen commercials. It's like, I got to see if that's real or not. There's a guy on the show and he just takes anything, whatever you can dish out, to his nuts. 
two by fours. Dude's doing like the teeter totter, jumping on the other side, smashed up into his ball. So like, he's got fake nuts. That's they're like, dude, you got to be wearing a cup or something. And then they had one of the one of the shows, one of the guys like judges or whatever is a W E whatever TBS's wrestling show, whatever W E C. Whatever it is, he came up there and it's like I kicked the guy right in the right in the balls and like this guy is not faking. It. There's no cup there. I hit flesh and it's like oh my god. And what is a eunuch who has? I don't know. There's got to yeah. be something wrong with it. Something like the nerve endings are severed. Something like that's not real. It can't be real. But I mean, someone who gets off on that. But here's the thing. Again what? though, I'm not. You're a married men. Huh. So let me ask you this. If either of your wives were like, I want you to put clamps all over my body. I want all of this shit where it's just going to cause me an insane amount of pain. Are you into that? Would you do that? If they wanted it? Yes. She was into it? Yeah. Yes. What if she said, I want you to whip me to a point that afterwards I'm bleeding? If you ask for it, <laughs> I'll do it. If she's into it, yeah. yeah. It's not. See? It's not hurting anybody else. No, she no. Wants and, it. And again, yeah. I'm not judging, but yeah. that's she wants it. But these are the things we're talking about. Sure. I right? mean, yeah. I mean, I. I'm just saying, I don't get it. Yeah. To say that's it's not a point of uh, giving it to somebody or right. allowing them the pleasure of yeah. whatever they're into. It's just a matter of what the fuck. Yeah. No, now, that being said, we're going to get into way too much territory. Lane, I hope we'll cut this out. At some point. <laughs> no, we're, at, we're at three minutes or three hours. We're we're, we're going to cut this. We're, we're going to cut this part out. This is going to be a two-parter anyway. Be a, so. It's going to be a two-parter two anyway, but let's just go ahead. Go ahead. What are we thinking? Go ahead. So I had my nipples pierced for a while, and I... That was fun. Having the nipples pierced. Okay. Was very painful, but it was a... One of those things where, like, as it's happening, I got slightly aroused. Just slightly. And the person that was doing it was like, that's very common. Sure. Cool. Okay. (laughs) Years later, I was having sex with a girl... And my nipple ring on this this side had already got torn out. On this <laughs> side, got wrapped up in a blanket. <laughs> it got torn out while we're having sex. And that was it. It's like prostate manipulation. <laughs> Literally never had a better orgasm in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so- you were all out of nipples at that point. <laughs> but I'm saying this. It was also the worst pain I've ever felt in okay. my entire life. <laughs> it's a fucked up thing. I, I, well, I think there's a there's a point where people associate pain and pleasure. I mean, there's that fine line. It's a sensation. Huge sensation. So if But I think it's mindset too. I think it's mindset over sensation. Sensation well, is sure. if I if I'm whipping you and you don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. It's pain. Yeah. If I'm whipping you, you want it? No. <laughs> Guess who's rock hard? <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's mm. I'm with you on that one. I mean, I I have no I have no thing for pain. I mean, I can tolerate a shit ton of pain, but to have it inflicted upon me in the name of pleasure, it does nothing for me. Nothing at all. I'm just saying the Imperial IPAs were maybe not the best idea. I'd, you said IPA. I just I picked Speak one. Speak the that, truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it said truth. The there truth. were like three of them right in a row. And there is the no truth. truth. The truth is like, you know, it. I It'll thought, set you free. I felt it fit the podcast, so yep. I chose it. It'll Talked set you free. I this earlier. There is no truth. <laughs> I know that. Still. Yeah. I love. <laughs> this is great. You said blind leading the blind, damn it. No. <laughs> so far. So I'm, far. Ha- I'm happy to be involved in this. I'm sure at this point <laughs> we're getting cut off. I don't know. 
But this I'm, th- is I'm great. thinking like the last hour and a half is going to get shot off. This oh podcast. no, no, we're keeping it all. All right, <laughs> nobody listens to this anyway. But yeah, that's what we've got like 30 followers. I, this I, is, this I was thinking great. when I went to the bathroom, I was thinking, okay, we're he, Lane's going to cut half Audio. of this out. And he's going to put the first part in there. And then, like, if he publishes the second half, it's going to be, like, the riffing. <laughs> Listen at your own fucking risk. All of the things of you being old as shit. <laughs> no, that wasn't even part of it. Why'd you flip me off? Because I, I know that thing. retaliation was coming. <laughs> I, you're going to get retaliation because you flipped me off. No. See, this is what I've done. <laughs> that's, what old, that's what old people do. They sit in their yard and they flip people off. <laughs> No. Fuck you! <laughs> I've set your younger brother against you. <laughs> I'm like Thanos. Hey, what? He's like Thanos. What the hell's that? From Lane, Lane hasn't seen the Marvel movies. You don't watch the Marvel movies. Lane hasn't big, seen the I'm Marvel not big movies. Big into that? No, that's fine. They're good movies for just for entertainment purposes. You should watch them just for okay. fun. But honestly, if you haven't done it at this point, don't start. Yeah, don't tell me what to do. I'm not yeah. telling you what to do. I'm just saying it's neat. It's for entertainment. Like I said, just no, nothing well, for entertainment. Well, which Marvel movies? Fight, fight, fight. Any of them. Fight. <laughs> I mean, there's a there's an order, but, I mean, there's some, you can watch them stand alone, some of them. They're, they're good. Hopefully I fire up some geeks on my podcast that are totally for the Marvel movies, and I'm just like, I'm not pissing all over them. I'm not no. saying that at all. Like I, was a, I was a casual fan of marvel whatever but casual the, toker of marvel movies whatever <laughs> but i mean i saw the original iron man i was like oh this is this is great and then yeah, it's a good movie then you shaved your face like him right but it's the only facial hair that looks good on me so whatever <laughs> when i met you your facial hair looked good whatever that was no. pre-iron man i know now it's tony but, stark but i don't i'm not trying to attract you <laughs> i'm trying to attract gwyneth paltrow <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Maybe you should try to attract your wife. <laughs> she likes my beard, damn it. <laughs> Honestly, you know, there was a joke amongst our friends because your Julia, before you were married, changed her name to Julia Stark on Facebook. That's because her father's name was Stark. Fitting. And yeah, we've, okay. we've drawn this. Funny that. Yeah, we've drawn okay. this comparison before. Yeah. Have we talked about this? I, I don't you, remember. I think you should right now. <laughs> because <laughs> all of our friends judge the shit out of you. No, 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 no. It, no, I I had this beard before. Lovingly. Lovingly. Uh, you know, no, no, I, I, no, I don't think your friends are judging me or anything, but no. I mean, kind of. Possibly. Yeah, I can see that. But still. I, just, I, just, I forget them. I just want to keep <laughs> you your brain moving so fast that you can't make a decision. <laughs> yes. Damn you for knowing how my brain works. <laughs> <laughs> no her it, it, i i i did this beard but then her father actually died in december of one year after we'd met or so and her father's last name was stark and she drew the comparison like oh my god that's so weird that her her father's last name was stark and you look like tony stark and, and it was stupid and arbitrary but at the same time you know, she saw it as a little bit of a sign, which cool. So she married you? Not a. Maybe that was part of it. I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> guys are dicks. <laughs> Go on. Go on. <laughs> Tell us more. Finish your story. No. No, I I, I get the comparison, but no, it was. But I I chose this beard because it lo- I thought it looked cool and it was the only like I can't grow a goatee I look I look stupid I grow a full beard and it looks like I'm trying to do something that I'm not and you know and like, I I actually kind of like, like the not full beard. look like Tony Stark which so, is what you're not trying to do no but I saw I've Tony seen Stark. you with a full beard you yeah. look good with a full I, beard I kind of like the way I look with full beard but Julia didn't like it too much because when I met her I had the full the five o'clock shadow beard thing and she's like eh, i don't care for that but i did this and she's like oh i really like that and so i kept this and i i do Six like the years way later looks. i do like the way this looks it does look good i know it's a bitch to maintain but i do like it but recently i've just i've thinking like i want to go back to the more five o'clock shadow full beard kind of thing but do it i i'm thinking i should but 
you get back to that and what? I know. Well, to cut this thing in the right way, oh, it's a pain in the ass. When really all you got to do is take a uh, beard trimmer and just go over all of it. That's uh, it. For the five o'clock shadow, yeah, no yeah. problem. But this thing. Very, uh, very intricate. It's, the angles are a bitch. It, but It's like a black man. I feel like you missed an angle lines. on this side. I didn't want to say anything earlier. It, they're, uh, they are slightly off. I will yeah, give you that. They're a little off. I will give you that. Yeah. Yeah. But to the casual observer, they can't tell. No, then you're Tony Stark. I have gotten several compliments and several people who say, "Oh shit, I thought that was I thought that was him." Honestly, like it's fucking weird because I don't look like I don't think I look like Robert Downey Jr. at all. But do at the airport, do at the wedding, do it like we went to a Christmas show a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, I thought that was Tony. St- I thought that was Robert Downey." I was like, "Shit." There are no coincidences. I don't think I look like George Clooney with Down syndrome, but I've been throwing that. <laughs> you know, now that you mention it. <laughs> you know? The, you shouldn't now smile. Wait, that wait. doesn't help. Oh, the smiling usually helps, but wait. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let you, me do this. You, you've brushed what little tough. <laughs> no, 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 little, no. Wait, wait, wait. What here's, little here's, tuft you had on here's, the top Here's of the head. other one. Fat Jude Law. <laughs> Raise an eyebrow. Oh my God! You look like Fat Jude Law. There we go. <laughs> I bet you could see it. Now I've always wondered anybody. What? What the fuck do people say you look like? Because we, uh, I always get it every time. Like, like, oh, you look just like your brother. I'm like, well, who the fuck does he look like then? Because I get people to tell me I look like certain celebrities. Whatever. You look like healthy Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> What? Like better decisions, Johnny Knoxville. That's what I'm saying. Like if Johnny Knoxville just stopped like, it, just, just stopped it, just, <laughs> just stop beating your shit, just, just, just say no more. Stop the jackass after the yeah. first just one. Just stop jackassing, sir. Yes, you look like what Johnny Knoxville should have been. Uh, well, considering Johnny Knoxville is a multimillionaire, well, you made the wrong choice. But, yeah. Well, error. What? No. No. I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Lane, about Lane told us to turn off our phones. I turned my shit off. It's on airplane mode. We've been on airplane mode. None of this is getting aired. Now I show my ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. I seem to have stopped hitting the record button as soon as we started. So, just kidding. I did that, I did that once <laughs> in did that another podcast. podcast so. <laughs> Didn't record a whole damn thing. A healthy Johnny Knoxville. I've never been called that. I've been called. I've been called a uh, Jerry Seinfeld. I've been called a uh, Adam Sandler. I haven't gotten that. No. No. Well, that's how we're different. Okay. So, you know, Johnny Knoxville. No. But Adam Sandler and uh, Jerry Seinfeld. That's what I've been called. Shit. Yeah. See, I, I don't see, see Jerry Seinfeld. That. You're. So much more muscular than Jerry. Well, Seinfeld. no, just That's... in the face and the way I act. Apparently, the guys that I went right. to college with said, "Okay, you know, the way you act All and right. the way you talk is more Jerry Seinfeld." You do have a. I'll give you this. Good demeanor of asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I make it a point to try to throw my guests off, thinking they're coming on, thinking, "Okay, well, he's going to treat me right, correctly." And I throw them a curveball, and oh shit, well, this isn't like any other podcast I've been on. That's my hope. That's my intention. You've done well. Thank See, you. And I, I told him when I first started listening to his podcast, like I'm used to him kind of mumbling, like not enunciating his words. And I remember when. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's not <laughs> strangling a duck. I remember when we went to Detroit and we met uh, Laney's stepfather. Yep. Gary. Gary. And Gary, like, just shouted across the table, like, at least I can understand your brother <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> like, at least one of these guys speaks up. <laughs> It's like, okay, I'm not the only one because Lane just kind of mumbles through his shit. And it's like, I, at least I, I'm glad that I can understand one of you guys. And it was, I, I spoke clearly. I spoke, you know, loudly enough. 
and I I tell Jeremy, my stepson, all the time, it's like, dude, you have to speak up, you have to enunciate, you yeah. have to talk. If you're talking to me, don't get quiet, speak up. And I was surprised when he did this podcast that he enunciated, he spoke into the microphone, and it was clear and concise, and it was like, oh, awesome, this is not what I expected. And I was like, cool, my brother can do that. Now if I can just get him to do that in real fucking life. <laughs> Microphone is a great thing. No shit. <laughs> you were articulate when I got here today. So I yeah. was. Yeah. Was. Was. Yeah, I've kind of start, stumbled into the uh, and then you, slurring phase. Then you took a nap. Because <laughs> you had to resuscitate. <laughs> resuscitate? I don't think I was, was dying. Like, Oh, I can't. I, I, I can no longer enunciate. My jaw's dying. I should go to sleep. I needed a mm. reboot. <laughs> I nodded off for 20 minutes total. Yeah. That no, that's all it was. That was fun. Just giving you shit. Oh, I know. It's fun. It's all fun. Yeah. But I'm glad you guys came on this podcast. I'm glad I was having a meeting at the mines. Just all guys podcast is fun it's just sit here and bullshit it's fun this has been a great time oh yeah i'll I'd do this again tomorrow if we yeah had. if it wasn't the super bowl tomorrow i'd do it again well i wish you the best for the super bowl like i said you put in the time ah uh, dude <laughs> our team's really been doing well <laughs> what the fuck are you step away from the microphone turn right. him off <laughs> yeah turn him off bears fan yeah. who who uh, wait, who day? Who day? There you go. Yeah. Who yeah. are who are they? Who yes. are they? Yeah. Who are? Yeah. <laughs> who are they to believe they could beat they ba- thy Bengals? <laughs> <laughs> who, who are they team? Who are? Who are? Who are? Who are, who are they? Could, <laughs> who to Shake, believe they could beat them? Bengals. Shakespearean Bengals. Yeah. No, <laughs> truly, dude. I this, hope you guys win. This this is gonna be awesome. And. Well, and again, this this is a year ahead of schedule, at least a year ahead of schedule before we even thought we would compete in yeah, the playoffs. At least. So this at is least. this is house money, so fuck it. This is so awesome just to be able to be here. And <laughs> so I still have Super Bowl twenty three on tape somewhere. I mean with David Fulcher and yes. Nicky Woods and VH like- Bud Bowl one, man. Commercials. On VHS somewhere. That's how much. That's how much I know about the Bengals. Is that Ryan used to scream yeah. and yell about the Bengals yeah. when he was, however, whatever. So age you've that never was. been a fan. No, I've just no. that that uh, little whatever yeah. the hell you call that pennant pennant that that, that came from your room, didn't? Yeah, it? that was from my room when I was yep. a teenager. Yep, I recognized wow. that when I came downstairs. I'm like, Jesus, that's that's the one I recognized from his room yeah. when I was. So little. you were never a fan of the Bengals. No, I didn't care. That's incredible. I was a Cowboys fan when I was yeah. a little kid, so that's really cool. Guys. I kn- yet yeah. I know from Ryan, David Fulcher, Icky Woods, yep. and basically those are the two guys that I know. I had a, that's I had, really. Cool. I had a Fulcher poster. I had a SWAT team poster. I had a Boomer Siason poster in my room in '88 back then. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's really neat. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's weird. It's a weird thing to yeah. know that much from your childhood, and you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's cool to you know the things you remember about your brother or your you know the person you grew up with. So, yeah. Anywho, we should probably wrap this up. It's been over three hours. <laughs> yeah, it's great. been a bit. Just freaking great, just to sit and just, drink. Just to and, know we could go on for another three. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we could <laughs> to expand on every single thought that no comes shit. into Austin's head. I feel like we're going to do that tonight. <laughs> I'm sure we will. It, just, it won't be recorded. Off. Right. Yeah. It won't be recorded. So. Well, thank you guys for. Oh, oh, oh one, one, more. Perfect one more. Perfect timing. One more. <laughs> Perfect timing. Thank you guys for taking part Woo. in this little uh, adventure. We're probably going to divide Lane, this, this up into two parts. This has been an yeah. honor. I've been dying to come on this podcast. And the shout outs I've gotten in the episode so far. Disappointing. But I'm on the podcast now. <laughs> There's part of me that really wants this all to be just focused in on how old he is. God, God damn. damn it. I'm kidding. <laughs> just know it's all coming from that side of the table. Oh, I know. It's, no, je- it's jealousy. It's it jealousy. Is. Just, it is. And he admitted it earlier. It's on tape. It's good. I wish I looked like you. I know. 
<laughs> Without the, yeah. Yeah. I know. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys very much, and we thank everybody thank for you. your time thank this you. time. And until next time. Who day? Oh, God. <laughs>